What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Post to Post podcast. With me, as always, my co-host, Matt Small. Hey. And this week, we have a lovely special guest, local beer league legend, Paul Varley. Hey. What's going on, buddy? Pretty Thanks good. for coming on this week. Mm-hmm. A little short notice. Yeah, yeah, definitely short notice, yeah. I know you're uh, on call tonight, too, so we might have to scramble a little bit later on, but hopefully no one uh, has any issues. Oh. Yeah. Everyone, you know they love their heat yeah <laughs> good little skate we had this week too uh i think i'm gonna be signing on with the massive ice holes paul's uh beer league team we got the jersey hanging up in the back he brought us in some nice goodies a little keychain and some stickers and magnets pretty sweet what league is that uh power play actually power play so matt's on the dogs and you the guys dogs. are what c3 uh we're on d1 d1 okay yep. uh surge asked me to fill in for them this week but I, could, I couldn't make it oh no i couldn't make it initially and then their other goalie is going to cover. So Surge is a good team. Who are you guys Which playing one? in the playoffs? Uh, we so this Monday we're going to be playing uh, Fod Hole Tongue Punch in the beginning for the first round. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know what the second round is like. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a do or die. What seed are you? Um, terrible seed. That's that's where we are. Oh yeah, <laughs> down at the bottom. Jeez. Yeah, far play. You just uh, every team gets in the playoffs. That's pretty much how they do it. No, we get, I don't think we've made it past the first round. We always got kind of lit up. Yeah, and you guys are thinking about going back to Metro, you said, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's easier for everyone, like Bear Academy Commute. and mm-hmm. everything. Yeah. Nice. So. Nice. It seems like it's getting back to where it was. It seems like more people are joining in, more teams and stuff, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, even because yeah. um, I, I, uh, I'm i on another team, too, the Sea Turtles, and they just joined as well. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why they gave us a bunch of 1050 games just to. Because oh, you knew oh, guys? God. Yeah, just to make the ice and get yeah. the ice for everybody. Uh, and are you guys, so we talked about, like, me and Paul off the air, talked about, like, relegating and moving up and things like that. Are, are they thinking about changing Sea Turtles, too, or no? Um, the Sea Turtles, they want to go down as well. They're mm-hmm. very similar where they just couldn't really uh, get their legs under them during the season. So Yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, I definitely want to sign on for next season. My wife doesn't want me to, though, after coming home at uh, <laughs> an absurd hour the other night. I yeah. won't say how late, but it was late. So. Yeah. My, yeah, that was more morning, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my my teammates, uh, you ever heard of the Phantoms? Yeah. That's uh, fucking hilarious. It is. You ever hear of them? Yeah, it's oh, just yeah. a bunch of like older guys. They call the Phantoms because they never show up. They just get together, go to the bus, mm-hmm. and they come home the wife to the wife. I think the whole gimmick was every guy goes back to the wife like, yeah, let's go to the game-winning goal, and like, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so like, if you play the Phantoms, no, you're just going to – don't even show up you're gonna win anyway <laughs> yeah well I, I think that was like a, a league thing it wasn't like a team thing like this league just implemented a t- like just about oh no way this that's one funny. team that's the phantoms oh no oh shit. so it gets the other team out of the house for the night is yeah that what it is? yeah i got gotcha. plays them like that's your bye week yeah but they still put you on the like yeah yeah give you and stats then and stuff. you go play against the phantoms and then you get to go out that yeah, is awesome funny. just go hang out that's even the... better yeah. i thought it was one team that just fucked everyone else I and says that. i'm not that's, i'm not doing that's it fucking legendary right there that's great hey there was this team that uh, the Cadivers and one other team, because we're going back to Metro, that I was talking to our captain, and he goes, Cadivers and someone else, they went to this league that's, if you're not from Boston, you, you got to know how difficult it is to get here. It's Warrior, it's BU, and what's what's another, it's another, it's a third rink that's just. UMass Boston was brutal, I remember that, because he had to pay to park. Yeah, that too. Oh, it's another one. But all three rinks are just, like, terrible. If you play at that BU rink, you got to park at that, like, stop and shop. Yeah. Like, right there. And Risk probably get towed. towed <laughs> Cause there's no other parking at all in BU. And the Warrior Ice Arena, it's just, it's, I like it. I don't like the ice, but I, I just, I like the <laughs> arena itself. But getting there and getting out is so fucking bad. Yeah, I, yeah. I hate going there. I remember when it first opened, I was getting texts, like, hey, am I filling in for an 11 o'clock at night game? Like, no, I am not driving to Austin at 11 o'clock. Yeah. When you add a commute to it, it changes everything. Yeah. But let's circle back to Paul here. Let's talk about your playing career a little bit. I know that you've just recently kind of dabbled into goaltending, right? You were originally a player? Um, Yeah, I, I started playing out, like, my early 20s, and then, like, I did that pickup. Okay. Um, did you skate growing up at all or no? I did, like, one season, and yeah. uh, it was, like, before you could check. Yeah. And yep. I went to check, and then I got put in the sin bin, and then that kind <laughs> You of, hated it from that point that on. That sealed the deal for me. Oh, yeah. I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to get physical, and so. Yeah, I just did, like, God one season. God forbid you wait a year. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't so. have been standing there. Yeah. I, I always went to, like, my brother's, like, practices and games, so, like, I knew the deal of, like, uh, do we really want to wake yeah. up? And, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense, actually. Yeah, 5 a.m.s and stuff. Yeah. All of a sudden, the pads just looked really nice, you know? Yeah. 
Was all of a sudden, the gear, the goalie gear looked really nice. You're oh. just like, oh my god, I can custom all that and just like relax in the crease. And... Oh, back then, yeah, my brother was a goalie. My dad's like, you are not allowed to play goalie. <laughs> no way, that's <laughs> yeah, funny. Too expensive. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. This is uh, Paul's mask that we swapped out. I did not get mine painted. This thing came out sick though. Mm-hmm. This is awesome. Paul's a big uh, swag lord out there. He's got the um, what? Do you, what do you? What are your pads? Uh, they're the Warriors. I'm not a big fan, but they're the brown, the Bucky. So mm-hmm. it looks, you know, the old school look to go yeah. with the, the mask. So that's great. That's yeah. funny. You are either like a huge Warrior guy, or just like don't wear them. You know, that's why came across as of late. Well, uh, there's, a, there's a few guys that wear Warriors. Like you like those? I'm like yeah, dude, I love them. I'm like nice. Yeah, I just they just can't don't see feel myself right. wearing them. It's yeah, like weird. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, I went from Brian's. They like like. You know, like a nice recliner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lazy boy. Yeah, and the the war is just like real stiff and like just just weird, different. And uh, so the I had a thirty three Brian's, so I'm like oh, I, I need them, you know, a little bit more for the knee knee drops. And uh, so I went thirty five Warriors, and it's the same. I'm like, so a thirty five Warriors the same as a thirty three Brian's at the time. Yeah, and, yeah, it's nuts. And they're just not tall enough. <laughs> the the sizing is different now too. My my original Vons were 35 plus ones, mm-hmm. and when I went to uh, Goalie Monkey to look at the Vaughn VE8s, I'm looking at the 35s and trying them on. I'm like, why are they so big? And finally, some Goalie Monkey guy came over and like, want to get resized? I'm like, I don't think I shrank that much. And he goes, no, 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 the <laughs> sizing changed, so I'm 33 plus one now. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Wow, like, that's so weird that they can just change the whole change measuring it. system right yeah. well a lot of these these companies have been like swapping out like who's actually manufacturing now like you know oh like, really ccm lost like was it lefebvre and, yep yep and yep. true picked them up like true picked up oh, a lot of those like yeah. true became one of the big names of the nhl Huge this names. season i i don't know if it's true or not but like uh supposedly it was just a bunch of bauer guys left and started true and then oh wow yeah you know, like in their skates they just bought vh skates like that's not even their thing and then like same with the goalie stuff they oh. bought lefebvre that like these like established brands that were like nice but not mainstream gotcha wow so interesting because their skates are like true skates are like comfortable but uh i never uh, trusted the brand because when i first saw it i was like it's up and coming i'm like "Eh, do i really want to go with this brand and now like seeing everyone rocking them like you said the skates are great like kind of want to give them a shot skates have been around forever yeah i needed new skates and when those goalie skates came out they're like they're form fitting and i was ready to just like put all my money in it and then i when I went at Gun Goalie Monkey, I went to go try them on, and I was like, you know, what's the process for this? And they told me, and I'm like, I, I want them. And he goes, you sure you want them? I'm like, what about those Bar S2s, uh, two S's over there? I'm like, yeah, I'll give them a go. Threw them on, and I was like, oh, I'm going to take these. Like The Bowers? So the Bowers. Yeah. Those two S's that I win now is, like, the most comfortable, like, perfect oh, nice. skates I've ever had. But if I can get another if I can get another pair of skates I think I'll definitely do like true those trues are on don't don't get the the um the one piece boot trues so I never you got the two piece uh the one piece so it's all like one yeah. solid piece cuz yeah. I got them for 500 bucks they go for like 13 1500 bucks and I'm like ah oh, steel mm. and then every there's a time, reason for it <laughs> there's a reason for it cuz every time you go to like stop or like you know work your edges it like lets out this loudest screech like oh god Arr! And that's just that's just how they are. Because I went to the camp, GGSU camp, and um, and I'm like, hey, is that is that just me not being a good goalie? And they're like, oh no, that's how they that's are. Just how they that's are. awesome. Yeah, nothing you can that's do. That's interesting. Let's transition into that. Actually, tell us more about the GGSU camp because it's something that's always like interested me. But I'm I was kind of intimidated by just looking at like the people that are in GGSU and like the resumes that some of those guys have. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so they have like a little bit of everything for everybody. Um. I signed up because I saw another guy I played with um, on my travel hockey, and so I and he's like a beer leaguer. So I'm like, okay, I, I'll just do like with him in the practice for the GGSU camp, and uh, he ended up getting pulled, but I still went. And basically, I'd say pretty much everyone there is just just beer leaguers trying That's to, sick. you know, have fun. Like, because the second you you drop in the locker room, everyone's like, hey, check out this mask, hey, and then like a bunch of guys brought the extra gear with them, so like. Oh yeah, I wear Brian's now, but I have you know like CCM pads you can try out. So like everyone's like, like swapping pads, gloves, <laughs> sticks, and like everyone's trying a bunch That's of stuff. Awesome. Yeah, like I walked in, there's a big pile of gear sitting there, and I'm like, That's what's sick. up with this? And like some guys are selling stuff. Like I had my cage powder coated by a guy that was down there. He was awesome, and he did it like overnight next day. Like, oh here no you go, way! Holy shit! Oh yeah, and it was like twenty bucks. I'm like, Jesus, you can't steal. beat that. Oh yeah, I did a great job. He's doing a bunch it does, of other yeah, things, it came right? out great. 
It was funny because I was sitting in the locker room, and like I said, we're all just like gear snobs. Like, oh my god, what are you wearing? What's this? <laughs> I saw him pull out this other guy's cage for a guy from uh, Germany, a German goalie, and uh, and he had like like cool blue flames on his helmet. And I saw that his had that blue, and I'm like, oh, that's that's a pretty sharp the room. Look. I'm like, I'm getting that. Yeah, can I get that? <laughs> He's like, you want a different color? I go, no, I want that one. <laughs> so it's funny um, how gear slotting has changed a lot. Like, uh, when I went to John Elkins Goalie School in Toronto, like, 2010-ish, we'd, we'd be in there, and I, we'd have, like, Brian's Giz, Vaughn, Reebok at the time. And uh, I don't think anyone – I don't remember anyone just being like, dude, like, sick pads, like, you customize it this way. Maybe people were just like, hey, like, I've been wanting to try Brian's. How are they? Like, that type of – It's really just thing. looking at the brand name rather than, like, what you can do well, with right, it, right? Exactly. But now it, it's like, holy shit, like, you do – like, the Brian's uh, – well – I was gonna say the Bryans at the time you could do whatever you wanted. Yeah, like the any graphic right? you wanted. Graphics, yeah. But mm-hmm. now Bauer those Bowers the, you yeah. can well, do they just like print it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially where they're like one flat face now, those Bowers. Those look those sick. Look so I sick. wanna try those yeah. so bad. Yeah, they're filthy, yeah. But now there's like so many customizations, there's so many mods. You could definitely see like just a guess that watching like NHL, like you you pause the video of like Tuka Rask or someone like from like a neck cam, you're like, hmm, I wonder what mod he has in the back of his pads, you know? There's so much now, it's just... Yeah, there really is. And it's becoming more, um, I don't know, standard, you know? Because you see it and you're like, how did he do that to the pad? Because it doesn't come like that. Yeah, now it's exactly. like, they'll add the shit right to it. Right. And it's part of the pad. Oh, yeah. Like the Lundy loop back in the day. Like, I had to make mine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I had to make my loop. Now it's just like all... Like Every new, skate has new them. Bauer Connects have the Lundy loops on them. Oh, they you know? do? Yeah. yeah. Huh. You were saying you saw someone with them, right? Someone um, had them? So one of the coaches at that camp, uh, Frankie, mm-hmm. he just signed with the Providence Bruins. Um and he had them, and everyone just basically staring at his skates, like every drill, like mm. <laughs> seeing how they work. Yeah, yeah he That's loves funny. them. I guess he's had them for a while. He's he's got a good rapport with Bauer, and so he's had those for a while. Um, my buddy just got him too, and so he's not sponsored by Bauer like Frankie is. So um, he's like, yeah, I really like them. It's it's weird to get used to the the pivot, mm-hmm. and he's like, because of the pivot, he feels like that top clip. He's like, I feel like it's not tight enough, but it is. It's just you have that extra give, so mm. he's kind of like kind of weirded out about it. He, but he's like, I can. Uh, he's like, I'm moving better. I can, you know, position myself better. But he's obviously you got to get used to it because it's yeah, yeah. It's, I feel like everything about that those skates, like I just, I just want the only thing, the only no, I wouldn't say negative, but the only thing I've ever heard of. Uh, if you're on YouTube, you've ever heard of uh, Casimir Kaskasuo. He played for the National Predators. And now he's in Sweden, the Swedish Hockey League, and he has a YouTube channel. And uh, just recently, he put up a gear review, and he had the Bar Connects, and he just all all he said really was just like it's not for me. He's going back to the trues. So I was like, interesting. A lot of players, uh, goalies like from the pros, or whatever, just like yeah, I'm switching to this. You know, he's the only player that I think I've seen that was just like no, no not for me. And and uh, when was he playing last? Like when is his kind of. Um... He career. plays for Alexan's IF right now in the Swedish Hockey League. So he's still, like, you know, he's still up there in the playing. pros, okay. yeah. Yeah, because I just feel like some of the older guys are just like – because, like, even, like, Tuka Rask. Yeah. It's hard to change. that Vaughn yeah. 6000. That 8800. They don't make those epic 8800s. They don't make those anymore. Vaughn yeah. has to custom make those for him. Yeah, he they would not They refuse to sell them. Yeah, yeah. it's insane. It's kind of like I think it was Marla that was on like his last pair of skates because they had been discontinued so long ago. But he bought like twelve of them, and he was just like riding this last pair out, like <laughs> it was beat to shit. But uh, I can't think I, of making gear for Marty Brodeau though back in the day. Yeah, just like Reebok. Who else did he have? It was Reebok something else? Or just like, all right, well, if you want it this way, I'll make it for you. you yeah, know? yeah. We went on a little bit of a tangent there. I wanted to circle back though. You said uh, you started really playing when you were in your early twenties. Did you? Like start off in net? Did you want to be a goalie? Like what's the what's the story there? So I had to pick up through my company because I sucked then. So you know, if if you like like every team like the worst guy is the captain because because <laughs> he runs it. So I ran this pickup and uh, I just had a hard time getting goalies. So yeah. I just bought Made the, the gear investment. And I'm like, yeah. Eh. So, <laughs> what do you, what do you like better now? Like oh, I, I like playing out because I love I love chirping. Out. Yeah, uh, I'm all about the. <laughs> you can do that from the net, so you're just gonna be a bit louder. <laughs> yeah, you hear me out there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. that's um, funny, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of nuts to see that perspective of it. Uh, but you do prefer to play out, huh? That's funny. Oh yeah. Well, my my buddy actually. So, um, in high school, he played goalie. He actually took a puck to the chest and he actually passed away. No shit. Yeah, you see and, that a lot in in yeah. lacrosse. 
there's this piece that you buy that goes over or under your chest protector, and it's basically a pyramid. So when yeah. you get hit there, it absorbs the, the shock to yeah. the rest of you. Yeah. Yeah, you see it's them crazy. in the, the player's chest protectors now too. They put like an extra. They piece. should have that on piece, every fucking yeah. piece. Yeah. It's crazy. I had a uh, oh, my old Vaughn chest protector, the 8800s. It was starting to really wear down, and I took a shot so hard it tore my chest plate. I remember, like, the next day, like, I was breathing, and I'm like, I felt like I was having a heart attack, and then I went to the doctor's, like, your chest plate's literally torn. That's crazy. I was like, oof. Yeah, goalie's, goalie's pretty wild. And then, you know, you see the bear leaguers where I, I remember I had a Vaughn chest protector, and, you know, you hug on the post, and uh, they have the cl- the plastic clips right here. So I'm hugging the post. This guy just winds up, like, two feet out and just, like, oh annihilates my God. Me. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, <laughs> You just trying to knock me in the net or something and score, <laughs> especially when guys get mad. Like if you're if you have a good game, you know it's you know something under coming. their skin. Yeah, yeah. yep. Yeah. But let's uh let's jump over a little bit. I see you got the shirt on for it. Egypt ice hockey, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. It's, you want to uh, get into that a little bit? Oh yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so like this all happened because Facebook's just wild. So I um I joined a uh, it's a draft tournament, and they go like it's mainly the states and like Canada. I think they have they they want to do like Sweden and there's other ones too and they they rival each other because like the one guy got fired or something I'm not really sure yeah yeah they always yep. like there's a backstory rivalry though yeah, yeah. and I, I it's awesome to watch yeah <laughs> so I did that um, it's great because like the teams are super balanced because when you sign up you go I'm this caliber player and when you get drafted you're standing up there with all similar players and um, and, the, and the goalies pick the teams and then you have to chug a beer and that determines the next <laughs> draft order draft order for the next round yeah <laughs> so i did that facebook's like oh hey you did this like how about friendship league and no like, so you just like found like a random like ad like suggested group and yeah, joined it no facebook. way that's yeah, nuts new. yeah <laughs> um and and that was scary because like so i saw this and i'm like i'm not really sure and i'm like they had a couple videos like because they originally started out in north korea like that's where they first started really playing. yeah um the guy scott how that, that runs it He's into the um, special needs Olympic, like, um, I'm not sure if it's hockey only, but he does, like, all the stats for mm-hmm. him and stuff, and, like, so he's a remote worker, and that's why he's a, he's a travel junkie and skydiver. Um, <laughs> Holy he just crap. does it all Holy over the shit. world. Oh, yeah. He just, like, like broke his neck in, in Mexico, and then, like, the, you can pay the doctors, and they gave him, like, the video of them doing the surgery. He's like, yeah, I guess you can in Mexico. Yeah. Wait, what? what? He just oh, yeah. bought a video of him getting operated it, on? Oh, yeah, and he got to like, keep the pieces <laughs> of his neck, too. <laughs> what? It, it's different world, man. Oh, yeah. Holy Why shit. would anyone, like, want that? <laughs> I guess, I like, legality? legality? Like, I might want that if you mess up. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, I, I want to be able know. to sue you. Like, <laughs> he's, he's a, he is, That's like, nuts. so when you see him, he looks like, just like, like a timid guy. You don't really think much of him, but he's, wow, he's wild. Wow, rails, guy. huh? That's oh, yeah. funny. Just holding it back, just. Wait, 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 no, I'll unleash uh, the beast there. Well, that's what happened in Egypt. So, like, you know, m- most of the times he's pretty lackadaisical and calm. But then, like, there was a couple instances because Egypt is extremely wild. It is, like, mm. bonkers. And uh, you- you'd see him just flip that switch. <laughs> and it was like, whoa, whoa. Now, would you say, like, I, I don't want to disparage them, but would you say Egypt is third world or still first world? Oh, it's definitely third, third world. Third world, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is, like, it blew my mind. So, like, you know. You always see the stuff online, and you like you have certain like um, preconceptions of it. Yeah. And uh, but I went there, and I it was a very big culture shock. And wow. and it's weird because they have the Suez Canal. So I thought like you know you have the you have the entire rights of the world's most influential trade route in the world. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, it should be pretty decent. And then they have like you know the pyramids. You can't. Yeah, I know South America has more pyramids than Egypt, but mm-hmm. still like. Those are the ones that Those everybody are the wants to go pyramids, see. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, like so, like when I so yeah, to kind of backtrack there. So I I saw it on Facebook and I kind of looked at these videos showing about you know North Korea and it was funny watching the video and and I got a chuckle because the guy's like, because the person interviewing him goes, um, "How's the hockey?" and he goes, "Oh, uh, they're really good, but you know." Um, our team, you know, we had a, a older goalie, so you know. But then I watched the video, and it's it's their Olympic team, and it's just like smoking everybody on the ice. I go, <laughs> I, d- I don't think it was a goalie problem. <laughs> like they're just like twirling around guys and just ripping shots. I'm like, yeah, I, I just don't think it was a goalie problem. <laughs> Ego check there. Um, so I saw that. I signed up. It was like um, like fifteen hundred bucks, and then like a couple days later, the website shuts down, and I'm like. 
did I just get hosed? Like, it's like, you know, too good to be true. Right. It was so scary. And uh, But, like, Scott was cool. He, I had so many questions. I've never traveled, really. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've gone to Disney World a couple times. <laughs> never out of the country. Uh, I went to Montreal once. That's yeah. pretty wild as well, but... Wow, so this is a massive just... Oh, yeah. It, and I hate flying, and, it, and it's, like, uh, 17 hours, because mm-hmm. I had to go to... Uh, I went through wow. Qatar Airways, which... It was the cheapest, and I found out it's like the best airline in the world. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! It was beautiful. They were great, and uh, so you had to fly over Egypt, past it, and then fly Double back. back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so, so the website goes down. I'm like, so I'm still kind of chatting with them, but I don't want to like let them know that I'm like shitting your pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, Make uh, them think that you have more money to spend, so the scammers <laughs> like, yeah, I gotta keep this guy entertained. Yeah, keep him on the hook. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the website comes back up, and then I'm like, so then I d- double check those videos. And I'm like, okay, this is on actual news outlets. Okay. So like, there's like, and you check the the um, the website address too. I'm like, okay, this is this has got to be legit. So I hop I hop on the plane, and all the COVID, because this is during COVID, and uh, you know you have to get all these tests, you have to mm-hmm, do everything. Mm-hmm. It was a big ordeal, and I've never traveled. So like, I'm online like, what do you wear in Egypt? And like, it's saying like. Um, White. <laughs> yeah. Anything as light as possible. <laughs> well, they, well, they want you to wear like um, suits all the time. You oh, know? that's right. Like, you were saying full that. Full length, like co- up, covered up, covered up, oh, covered like, up, button yeah. button up suit, um, shirt, oh, okay, yeah. and suit pants and and dress shoes. Like this is what they want you to wear in Egypt. I'm like, all right. Uh, we'll get the weather. Right. I'm like, it's ninety. <laughs> uh, I'll throw in a couple shorts what do you here. Mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I wore combat boots too, cause like when you do these um, trips, it's not just hockey. So you, so the whole premise is you go to this country. Um, they're usually third world or poorer. Um, mm. they're like super nice guys. Like I, I don't know what it is, but he finds like the guys that he links up with in these countries are great. The guys that go to it are all great. Um, it's like that. Like everyone's on the same page. Mm. Of, like. Because you're literally a hockey ambassador going to these countries, and uh, it just like you're single-handedly growing the game. And the fact that you travel with your gear too was crazy to me. I'm like, that's nuts. I won't. I won't travel with my goalie gear. No way. No, no. I yeah. have a I have a very personal relationship with yeah. my goalie gear. Especially <laughs> like, where you told me the gear that you bring with you, you give away. You leave there. Yeah, because right? they have nothing. That is so cool. Man. Literally, that's huge. Nothing. Wow. Because like so. So it, he, does it look like like uh, Ricky from Trailer Park Boys when he's like playing goalie in jail? Have you seen Trailer Park Boys? Yeah, he's yeah. wearing like the milk crate and like a fucking box of cereal. They got a lot of like gear from the '80s. That's wow, what wow. Using. And, and it was like a Chinese fire drill. So I get off the ice. I'm sitting there like you know it's hot. It's so hot. So I'm sitting there dying, and I look over, and this guy's ripping off his gear like it's to save his life. And I'm yeah. like, what's going on? Right. Like, and uh, I see him. He hands it to the guy next to him, and he's literally taking the sweaty gear, '80s Put gear that's all beat up, and putting it on to yeah. skate the next game. And yeah. it's like they're Whoa. sharing gear because they have nothing. Yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah. So when you do these trips, you you know meet these guys, and they're super nice. Like, yeah. and, and and like they do kind of go, "Ooh, what are you doing with those gloves?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get a couple guys that like, you know, they're yeah. they're sizing you up. They yeah. they know yeah. you're donating. <laughs> do you so. need that? They're standing real close to you, like. <laughs> yeah. And you share too when you're there too, because like they have nothing. So I'll like I had to play goalie in Ecuador. I did that one as well, and like, you know I'm sharing gear with the locals because yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do, get the job done, right? Oh yeah. So yeah, so you do like you know the first three days, four days is all like hockey. You hang out with them. You do like light light touristy stuff, but like you're, the, you know, the beginning is that, and then after that, because you're there for like a little over a week, and then it's like touristy stuff. Yeah. So it's and it's you're all in a group. And like this said, the guy, this guy, like checks off every, like, everything you want. Like he goes there, like everybody's nice. He gets all the right people. Mm-hmm. Um, you're staying in these beautiful hotels. Granted, it's you know, not the greatest like third world country deal. So it's like it's yeah. beautiful like, for Egypt, them. You, no, no, these hotels are still actually really? beautiful hotels, but like no hot water. Oh, I got and you. Oh, like, interesting. Oh, what the heck? Jesus. But it was just it was broken in my room. And then, oh. like, you go the the language barrier. They don't, like, it's just not up to, like, snuff. But, yeah, like, yeah. But in Egypt, they love, like, their marbles. So, like, you go into this entire, you know, um, lobby. Lobby, yeah. Beautiful That's marble, cool. beautiful wow. furniture. That's crazy. Absolutely beautiful. But, you know, um, when you go to your rooms, you had, to, I had to jerry-rig my thing because they shut your power off after an hour if you don't keep your room key in it. So, like, oh, when you're not there, like, it'll shut your AC off because they yeah. don't want you using electricity. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, so that, you know, like, that's just – but it's still beautiful yeah. hotels. So, like, yeah, he finds, like, all these cool things to do, beautiful hotels, great people. Um, it's definitely 
if you can make it work, I, yeah. I definitely. Yeah. And that. you've done yep. it twice, Egypt and in Ecuador. Ecuador, yeah. Yeah. nice. Yeah. Next one is Mongolia. That's next Whoa. month. Next month. Wow. wow. Yeah. yeah, that that went from a level four threat to a one now, so I'm pretty excited about that. A one <laughs> is a good, right? One is yeah. One is just you know normal. Normal. Just like, like Yeah. Um, just practice normal travel procedures. Wow. Four is do not go. Will let you go, but like the government highly recommends you do wow. not go. Oh wow! Because even Egypt, Egypt went from a two to a three. So two was because of COVID, and you know, but I never saw like you know hospitals full of people. I saw yeah, all, yeah. they're big smokers. So like when you go by the hospital, you saw all the surgeons out there just ripping butts, <laughs> ripping butts. It's like, what? <laughs> um, so that's that was funny. They don't like no drinking. Like it's a it's a Muslim country, so like oh okay. Yeah. So like you know you want a beer, and they look at you like. All right. Like, Piece of shit. Yeah, you're garbage, <laughs> man. But uh yeah, you can they they're smoking hookah, cigarettes, everything, you know. Wow. It's but that's their culture. Ecuador is a lot more fun. It was Yeah. Let's drink. Yeah, that's <laughs> and, awesome. Yeah, they yeah, actually yeah. went out and partied with us cuz the Egyptians didn't want to like once they found out we're drinking beers, they just didn't want to be with it. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. But but uh so Egypt was real uptight um cuz we were there at the behest of the government like when they found out about this, they like this is our first ever international hockey tournament, so they're like fully invested. Oh wow! Um, they had like all their um, dignitaries at the game. They had all their guards with their machine guns hanging out in the because wow. it was in a uh, it was in a, a mall, mall, right? Yeah. yeah. Same with uh, Ecuador, but the Egyptian one was like smack dab in the center of the mall. And uh, how and big were the cool. crowds? Did you guys draw a crowd with it being in a mall? So Egypt was like, like you wouldn't believe it. You know, you had like three stories of this mall and just people just like no just way like jamming oh, up against shit, the things. Really? Wow, dude, you're, you're a superstar. Like, oh yeah, dude, it was electric. So like, That's like so I, cool. I, I even got the goosebumps when I played. <laughs> you telling me about that? Walked. Like yeah. I just got some too. Yeah, we you passing the game, your stick but... over the over the boards like yeah, yeah. autograph it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had uh, I got it was like these um I don't know where they're from but they were you know not Egyptian people, um they were like they saw my nameplate and they're like oh they're like talking to me they're like Varley Varley and like I'm like yeah I got the playoff game later and they actually came back and no like, way yeah and that's they saw funny. me like we see you Varley and I'm like <laughs> I got fans like, I'm a, that's awesome I'm dude. a nobody that's so cool yeah that was but the game so like it was um Egypt first team friendship and it was like the semifinals and. And they smoked us like all the games because they brought in a bunch of co- yeah. <laughs> college level Egyptian Americans because mm-hmm. they were really, like they wanted to win. Yeah. Like from the get go, they're like, yeah. And they even like sent out an email like, hey, if you like start scoring a bunch, don't run up the score on us. <laughs> but oh, they ran the score up on us. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. The of first course. game just lit up. And after that, we started to get acclimated to the heat. And then yeah. the ice was like. You know, it's you know two strides. You're already at the other goalie. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. Wow. And the uh, but it was it five on five? Yeah. No, three on three. Three it's on three. Tiny, tiny nice. little ice. Um, by the end of the night, and in Egypt, you're literally skating in an inch of water. Oh, that's it was, oh it god. Was brutal. Yeah. And then like as a shooter, it was I was sweating bullets, not because of the heat, but uh, here's all the Egyptian dignitaries right behind the goalie, right? Mm-hmm. But they didn't have glass. They had. Um, Nets? like PVC pipes, oh. and then they took like you know like a badminton net or something, just like, and I'm like, that's not gonna stop a puck. <laughs> that's not gonna stop a puck. Um, the Germans, they didn't care. They were, you know, they're playing hockey. Yep. They were gritty. They're grinding these guys out. They're shooting these pucks Dude, at the that's net. That's scary. And it's like it's like I don't know if I trust that. You know, yeah. I wouldn't do that stuff. Yeah, they they Germans are wild. Let's just say mm, that. That's yeah. nuts. Um, that's fucking crazy. Because that's the thing is I met, you know, these people that are into it. And these other guys, I'm nothing because they're travel junkies. Yeah. Like one of the German guys, Andy, he's like traveled like 50 countries playing hockey. Like Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, if you can too. If you can text me over that image you showed me. There's a guy in the Friendship League, I believe you said, that created like a player card and it checks off each country that they played in. Yeah, sure. Is, Andy, is that Andy's card? Yeah, Andy's He's card. got like half the world checked off. Dude. Oh, yeah. It's pretty That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I would yeah. love we'll, to. We'll do throw that. that image down here for you guys, too, if, uh, if Paul can send that along. That'd be yeah, awesome. I can, yeah. Cool. Uh, it's on Instagram. But, uh, well, the other thing, too, was like when I when I saw him in the lobby, I saw his bag and he, he puts the flags of all the countries that's awesome. on his that's back. awesome so i naturally stole that and <laughs> i do states too because i i'm like yeah well, I, mean, I got like two exactly countries exactly right <laughs> right i would too yeah it's it's cool but um, i did want to touch on the uh the great blizz uh organization that you coach with too if that's cool yeah yeah, yeah. they're actually doing a summer program this weekend down at the bog uh, in kingston it's a special needs like hockey for everyone type of deal that's awesome um 
it's great. You know, you work with the kids. The kids love it. What's the age range? All, uh, all over? Little kids and mm-hmm. people in their 30s. Cause, awesome. You know, it's, it's, yeah. It, it, the, the guy's premise is, like, I don't care. It's Hockey's for everyone, and that's what he does. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you get different, like, um, skill levels. And then, you know, some of them have other things with them, so they can't. They just can't compete. But it's still, they're all having fun. Yeah, exactly. And they section off, the, like, like, here's the ones that can play hockey. Here's the ones that, you know, and they donate, the, like, everything. Like, yeah. these kids, like, you sign up, you pay, like, a little bit, and every Saturday come for practices and every then they saturday do, huh and then that's they, awesome they travel too um and they'll play other special needs teams i, I didn't know it was such a big thing mm-hmm. and are you coaching every saturday for them i or try to once it's, in a while <laughs> volunteer waking up at 6 a.m oh geez that's after early. playing hockey at 9 p.m the night before yeah. it's uh <laughs> it's brutal <laughs> yeah do you travel with them at all or no i haven't yet only because like every time i'm on call or just something comes up and, yeah uh, and is is Great Blizz like the name of the organization, or is that just like the states group, or because they travel? Has multiple ones. They do. Wow, that's, that's what awesome. I mean. Like it's there's they're everywhere. I did yeah. not know. Like that's awesome. Man. Like because that's the thing with hockey. I, I've never realized the communities that yeah. hockey has. Like we mentioned, GGSU, the Friendship League, Great Blizz. Like these hockey communities are everywhere, and it's just all these ranks, and they're just amazing programs, and that, I, that's one of them. I think part of it is how condensed. Each like hockey area is like the three M's: Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And then from there, every individual person that plays hockey knows that like there's a large majority of people, even when you're in those condensed area, that don't care about hockey. Oh yeah. And like everyone is just trying to grow the, their game in like their own way, you know. Mm-hmm. So I think everyone just takes it upon themselves to grow it how they can, you know. Yeah, and that's you know that's what the friendship does, and then you see that with those draft tournaments too. They're they're kind of yeah. expanding the areas because yeah. anybody can sign up, you know, and and. You know, if you're like, there was a few beginners with me the first year I did it, and I got to see their progress. Yeah, you know, and now the they're like year. saying they're a C level versus a D level a few years ago in the draft, right? Kind well, of uh, th- these like the people I'm thinking of that were on my team, like they couldn't really skate. Yeah, and, yeah. And they weren't really That's sure awesome. on the offsides yet, and mm-hmm. like this year, I'm like, you're making plays. Yeah. You're, you're, you know, you know what the game's going. You know, That's they're cool. obviously not, you know, <laughs> yeah. ripping shots or nothing. But you know, it was awesome to see the progress in those people. And That's awesome, awesome, man. Even with the kids, like they, they pick up skating a lot faster than you'd think. Oh yeah, kids, kids learn like sponges too. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I mean, it, it goes a long way. That's yeah. awesome. It's that. That's a that's a good organization. Those guys. Um, he started out down in Washington that's where he lived the guy that runs ours Mm -hmm. um and he actually got to link up with the Capitals I guess um what's the coach uh that they won the Stanley Cup with wasn't Bruce Boudreau was it no um who did the Caps win the Cup with Ovi's coach he went to the Islanders Barry Trotz Trotz Barry Trotz yeah so I guess he's like something in his family there special needs as well so like when he found out about them down there He like linked up with them, like you know what I mean. He that's hooked awesome. them up, like hanging that's out with so the players cool. and gear and and that's the thing, like that, like everybody, when they find out about this, they're just like so into it. Yeah. Um, because they actually do a lot of um fundraisers with the Bruins alumni, and it's it's awesome to watch yeah. that. But it's you know so like what it it is, it's just people pay to play for the team and they donate and and then all of it goes to them to do these you know yeah. I, th- that, I think that's they... why it's huge when a big organization like a, an NHL team gets behind it and can really start funding them a little bit more mm-hmm. you know well they they got a good turnout as is already man yeah. like that's you awesome. know like when they do the alumni games the stands are packed you that's know? so cool and they got these full rosters like and it's not even mainly the coaches it's just other people that just mm-hmm. you know they want to be there yeah. and they have like multiple teams to do it it's not just like the same guys yeah. like it's other pickups in the our local area yeah. I know of that like they're just into it and I, and i've actually seen some of the kids like like before i really joined them i uh i remember i was working at a house and like i remember seeing the kid he came running out with his jersey on his stick like ah i'm like <laughs> what's going on like and then he was wearing that jersey and you know uh, after i like found more about them like later just by by chance i'm like that's what it is that's so, so cool yeah we were just talking about hockey how it's kind of fallen by the wayside like soccer now is the third most watched sport and then we're, we sat there talking that hockey is a very expensive sport to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, anyone can get a soccer ball and play. Mm-hmm. but The barrier to hockey, entry is big. It's, you got to pay a lot of money for this gear. You mm-hmm. got to pay money to get on the ice. But it, yeah. no, it's like not everyone can afford it, you know? Oh, and yeah. That's why I love these organizations where just like for the, guy, for the people who want to play, here's this organization that's, hey, like, come here we'll show you how to play we'll get to the gear you need and we'll, we'll, we'll get this going you know it's awesome 
even even um at the uh, Warrior Ice Arena, they have like a it's like a little donation thing that like people just throw their stuff in there. And there's another I don't know what that organization is. I remember just seeing the display and it like explained like, hey, you donate this in this bin, we take it, we clean it, we'll do any Dude. fixes, and then give it to kids to get the kids out there. That is huge awesome. information for all you guys listening to. Warrior Ice Arena is in Brighton, Massachusetts. If you can stop by and drop off any of your old hockey gear and just chuck it in the bin, like that oh, goes yeah. a long way. Yeah, I didn't um, even know about that. <laughs> Yeah, that's and, and I sent that over to the Friendship League too, because like, um, so I, I I bring my own gear, but there was like this one guy, he lives out in Alaska, and he brought like three bags worth of gear. Oh. No way! Oh yeah, the guy is like the nicest guy in the world, like too nice. It's like, wow, <laughs> and it was yeah. in Ecuador, and like so like they're like hey, because like so the Ecuadorian one, um, it was in like a like I would say Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, yeah, okay. It was like, you know, it had the ball pit, a small little arcade, okay, yep. and then they had the ice in the back, and, like, that's their war. And, and so that one, we didn't get much of a crowd because we actually were there when the mall was closed. We had to like, go oh, through the closed oh, okay, mall yeah. to get there. So it was more just the players and their families. Um, but, yeah, he brought them, like, three bags of gear. Three bags of gear, And we're, man. like, trying to clean up all our – because we were drinking beer with them because they were fun. <laughs> yeah. um, and he's like, no, we got to separate it, you know, bottles here. And we're all just like, dude, we just played, like – you know, hours of hockey, <laughs> tired. <laughs> it's a weird feeling to go there with, like, all your gear and then leaving with, like, all your gear. Just feel it, feel like you're forgetting yeah, something. Like, what am I forgetting? The, well, the worst part for me is, like, some of the gear I'm donating, I'm like, I kind of oh, like these gloves that. better yeah. than the ones I'm using right now. <laughs> Just going to rip the band-aid and be like, all right, there you go. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I want this back. <laughs> I I'll be back next year. Me. Yeah. Um, so the one in – uh. So the Egypt was run pretty good because they brought in a lot of, you know, Egyptian Americans and like these other guys that were like real into it. Yeah. Um, the Ecuadorian one, like we really relied upon the vocals for the tournament type of stuff. So, so we get there and uh, and like, they were awesome. They had like this little um, scoreboard spot and like they had like a uh, whiteboard and I'm looking and I see five pucks and I'm just like, OK, we have a four day <laughs> tournament. I go, do you have any other pucks? Like, no. I'm like, oh shit. You got five pucks for a four day hockey tournament. I nice nice five, warm up for the goalies. I lost eight yeah. pucks my last game. <laughs> that was wild. And uh, and that's in a rink that's like designed to designed. keep the pucks in. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, even in Ecuador, they had no glass no either. Glass um, so, them, like, we're playing at like eight to like midnight. And then um, we, we, we go back to our hotels, you know, lazy, lazy. These guys, every night you go there the next day, they're like they're welding more stuff on the boards. They're putting more. Like yeah, they yeah. were actually welding bars and putting chicken wire like in. Fixing wow. things where like they think fixing. there's problems. You know yeah. that's cool. Oh, they, dude, they were so into it. Um, they even had like they other... probably kept that rink up and now like manage it. You know what I mean? A little bit, <laughs> or like moved it. Um, so so that rink like it, it's just they have what they have. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like when they were doing the ice there, they had like a, it was like a piece of angle heavy angle iron, and they just drag it across the ice get all the snow in one spot and then they came out with like this shovel that was broken so just like the shovel head and they're just scooping it into a bucket and you're just like it's like breaking your heart you know yeah, I mean? it's like yeah. you know we come here and you see the zamboni you're like come on come on yeah two, two zambonis on the ice like yeah. oh my god too much my, water the last video i just put up a mic'd up with matt but the last video i had i was just, well, i was kind of bullshit because one of the zambonis and hang them broke down i'm like motherfucker you know this is a brand new <laughs> yeah that yeah. too brand new I like it when they're both out there. It's like dueling Zimbo. Yeah, right. It's like the NHL. But that that Olympia was like beat. It was always pouring water mm -hmm. all oh, over the ice. You're like, come on. Like, made in like the 50s, you know. Yeah, Just but their their charity organization as well, Hingham is, and that's why you don't see them like upgrade as much because they. Um, oh, I didn't know that. They do a ton of that's scholarship funny. stuff. You know, they're they're a charity organization. That's yeah. awesome. Cool. Um, so. But what do we think, Matt? You want to try and jump into some NHL stuff this week? Yeah, I'm down. Cool. How much? Uh, how, how much gear do you bring? Just like whatever you have. It's like I do like a full set and then like two sticks, like, mm -hmm. like everything you'd need. Um, no, it's just no tough. pucks. I, I, <laughs> I did bring you know pucks, that for next but time. they have like my team's logos and you know. Yeah, yeah. And yeah I'm yeah. like, uh, but uh, it's supposed to be like a gift, not yeah. like beat the heck out of it immediately. Because <laughs> um, even the guy running, he brings pucks too to give to us, like as yeah. like a um, as a gift, and yeah. like on the back I write down like. Scored a goal in Egypt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. To, yeah. That's awesome to keep. Um, Ecuador, I, I had to play net and uh, the altitude, getting used to altitude there. Oh yeah. Is, so that's ten thousand feet up. Oh. So it's like Denver. 
Denver, I think, is uh, like five. Five, yeah. yeah. Wow. So oh, God, that's holy even worse. Shit. Holy shit. Oh, dude, Gives you some perspective. Going up one flight of stairs, you're out of breath. You're smoked. Whoa. Done. And uh, so, that yeah, I went there a couple days ahead, and I'm taking altitude pills because uh, he didn't want to tell me ahead of time that I had to play goalie down there. And I'm like, because <laughs> I had to do the translation. It was like Aguilar. I'm like. Does what that mean, that like, mean? captain or something? Eagle. Because everyone else has, like, Eagle. a different name. Eagle. Yeah. The eagle has landed. <laughs> so I did the translation. It says goalie, and I'm like, uh-uh. No, uh uh-uh. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Um, so luckily the um, guy from Alaska brought some stuff, but I'm using, like, a player's cup, and I'm like, bro, I would have brought, like, a goalie's no, cup. No, dude. Because I got nailed a couple times. Oh. Like, uh. <laughs> and uh, so, the, so uh, like, when he's playing, he's like, dude, you got to, like, be careful because the altitude because even in ecuador so like they mix the teams up originally just so you have like half the teams local ecuadorians mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. other half is these friendship guys um but yeah that first game I, I held back pretty good i was good good soldier there i'm like played we won i was like sweet okay second game i'm like man i just want to get it like a warm-up in i mm-hmm. want to actually feel these pads i want to get I smoked my lungs in warm ups and I could not get them back the entire oh, game. Oh, that's terrible. Could not. So like I just uh, literally by the end I'm just like hunched over like this and just scoring. I'm like, yeah. Nope, nothing's worse than being exhausted as a goalie. Nothing. I'm not tired. Nothing. Not sweating. It's Couldn't just breathe. oxygen de- deprivation. That's yeah. crazy. It was uh it was not. So the second day I'm like, nope. Nope. Second and third day, I'm like, no, but the championships, I went back in that and played because, you know, it's the chip, man. You gotta... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the second, so the second day, they finally gave us oxygen cans because I'd go out there and, you know, end to end and go jump off and literally hit that oxygen can because it's that 10,000 wow. feet, man. It's it's something. That's crazy. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. I didn't, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Well, then, then, like, Egypt, you're not tired. Um, you can breathe, but you're sweating. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so the, it's like one problem at each yeah, place. That's yeah, funny. Yeah. That makes me What's Mongolia going to be like? I it looks it's this facility is unbelievable. It it's like I would say it's on par with Warrior if not a little better. Wow. Cuz they got like light shows going on. Like this is like their it's their only rank and they and Mongolians they they seem to have a following with hockey like yeah. like I was Well the KHL the, it has a couple Chinese teams and there's a lot in Russia. They're like right in that mix so yeah. they probably watch that a little bit or keep up. Yeah, and and then they play it too. Yeah. They got they do outdoor rinks. They've mm-hmm. always had outdoor rinks, and they got Olympic sheet, and it's looks beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah, it reminds so. me of the uh, Stanley Cup Finals. Now I'm thinking about it. Florida, oh sorry, Tampa versus Colorado. I think Tampa was in Colorado. Like, <gasps> yeah, the altitude has an effect for sure. Oh, it happens yeah. to every team that plays in Colorado. Yeah, five thousand feet. I looked it up. It's like that's right at the cusp of when it will start affecting you. Mm. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Hmm. Add to that. Well, that's the thing, too, is like, so So you think about with Colorado, right? So if you come play here, you're going to have a hard time breathing, right? Mm-hmm. But the other the other edge of that sort is not only do they have that advantage at home, but when they play away. They're even better. Their lungs like, are there. Because yeah. when I came back from Ecuador, like for the, like a week or two, I literally could breathe. Like, I played goalie, and I'm like, I was not out of breath. Like, I'm jumping down, mm-hmm. getting up, not losing <laughs> that's my why, breath. That's why, I like, the Olympians go there to train because it's that much higher altitude. Yeah. You see those oxygen regulation masks where you can turn off your oxygen a bit. And yeah. Suffocate yourself while you train like an idiot. <laughs> I remember <laughs> Germans for the Olympics. They do, like, high, alti- uh, high altitude training. Like you sure you're not thinking of beer fest? <laughs> yeah, I have to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cut <Whoa>. this goat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt. You oh, want to uh, come back in the shot here and uh, yep. start the uh, NHL stuff? Let's do it. Let's get into some hockey news. Um, want to start us off? Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I'm going to start us off. Okay. That was it. All right. So, uh, what is it? Like two episodes, three episodes ago, I uh, I made a fool of myself. And uh, that bum that I was talking about from San Jose Sharks. Remember when I was talking about the Aiden Hill? It was an Aiden Hill mic'd up video. And Anna Hill's talking to some guy in, like, the corner of the boards. And he's got this hat on, long hair, like, no teeth. And I remember talking to Chris on the podcast, like, who's this bum just hanging out there? That bum is Mike Ritchie from the San Jose Sharks. I'm like, holy shit, am I an idiot. So I need to formally apologize because this dude is an absolute legend for the San Jose (laughs) Sharks. And here I am, like, who's this fucking bum for the San Jose Sharks talking to Aiden Hill? I think there's a lot of NHLers that could, uh be put in that category too you know what i mean because he said something funny and like very quickly he's smiling got no teeth he's got the long hair i'm like 
remember telling it's kind of like <laughs> shitting on him a bit and they're like remember there's a san jose sharks put up another video of like um uh just they do like these weird games nabok nabokov was in one for like uh i don't know like old time players this is like recent like old time players and here was Mike Ritchie mic'd up, and I'm like, oh, he's the guy I was talking about. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, yep, there's my formal apology for everyone and for Mike Ritchie, who probably never watched this episode whatsoever. So <laughs> just want to let you know. Uh, but uh, right away, we're going to jump into some signs, uh, more signs than anything. <clears throat> well, yeah, signs. So a lot of these, what I'm finding out is arbitration. Like, a lot of these signs are arbitration, and majority of them – avoid hearings like just avoid like arbitration hearings so i'll explain to everyone what an arbitration is sally arbitration is a tool used in the nhl to settle contract disputes between teams and certain restricted free agents players can file for salary arbitration in addition to teams electing to take a player to arbitration so again the majority of these are just to negate the whole um the hearings. So we have the uh, Edmonton Oilers. They sign Kaylor Yamamoto. Yeah. Oh my God. Let me reset that. Oilers sign Kayla Yamamoto to a two-year, $6.2 million contract, 3.1 mil AAV, and he avoids the hearing. Uh, I like this. 6.2 mil for Yamamoto. Well deserving. I can't. Perfect. Yeah. I couldn't really tell you what line he played on last year, but he really jumped his production up. Um, Edmonton was definitely one of those hot teams. 41 points last season versus 21 and 26 the years before drafted in 2017. Uh, I, I think that the number is right for this guy. It's just kind of nuts to me that they have this much money to give away with, you know. Everything. Yeah, with yeah, everything yeah, else on the going on. Yeah, with McDavID and right. the, their contract. You know, he makes 16 mil. I didn't know that. I was like, I thought, like, the highest paid guy in the league was probably, so like, 12. So is, is that, 11. like, just the baseline or is that It's probably with, with his it, incentives, with incentives and stuff, okay. I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm like, that is a lot of money, man. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. for the NHL. Left. <laughs> right, <wraps>. right. <laughs> exactly. Apparently, 6.2 mil. <laughs> um, and we're going to move on to another great team. The um, Calgary Flames here. They sign Oliver Shillington to a two-year $5 million contract, which is $2.5 million AAV, who avoids herring. Uh, two more, too. I'm just going to scroll through it. They signed Andrew Magniapani to a three-year $17.4 million contract, $5.8 million AAV, who's, who avoids the herring. And then a huge one, the Flames signed Jonathan Huberdeau to a massive eight-year $84 million contract, which is $10.5 million AAV, which is the largest in franchise history. He signs with a full no move clause from years one through six, and then a partial no trade clause from seven through eight. So that whole Huberdeau trade was like, we want you, and we're gonna sign your ass. They had to. Yeah. After we, we, losing uh, Johnny Hockey there, you, you yeah, that, do you had to. They wanted him. That that's that trade was probably the biggest trade of the uh, whole off season in my in my book. What uh, what do you think of the Calgary Flames, in general? You know, I, I, well, I, what's left of him now? Yeah. Johnny yeah. Hockey's gone because, you yeah. know, that's like your premier guy. And I don't know. Do you think H H Huberto is going to be able to come in and just step into that locker room and, you know, lead that just team? Just change shit? I yeah. don't know. But I do know someone who really hopes that they do because <laughs> I got my friend Matthew a gift while I was at the casino for a bachelor party. Calgary Flames $20 bet to pay out $720 if they win the Stanley Cup. Thank you. Very welcome. Uh, that's also my apology for last week's episode. I had a bit too much fun on the golf course, so we did not record last week. You're very welcome, listeners. And Matt, who's <laughs> hung out at my house for two hours waiting for me to sober up. Um, <laughs> but we will see how the Flames do this season. While I was there, I took a few bets that I'm kind of regretting at this moment. I put 20 bucks on each of these for Stanley Cup winners. I did Minnesota Wild, the New York Rangers, and the Vegas Golden Knights, which we have some unfortunate news about later on in this episode. So. Oh, uh, well, not going to look news so good. about your Golden Knights, but we'll see. We'll see what good? happens. No, what about your Philadelphia Flyers. No, I didn't yeah. put any money on that. I'm, I'm not Stanley an idiot. Cup? Yeah, they did actually sign Zach McEwen to a one year, $925,000 contract to avoid a salary arbitration hearing. Nice. Something. Something. It's it is something. The Buffalo the Sabres Flyers. special. The, yep. It's it's something. Low money, no money. Let's pay him. Well, so you know, it's something we need something from the Chicago Blackhawks, and they have two signs. Yes, yeah, so they signed Caleb Jones to a one year, $1.35 million contract, and they also signed Philip Kurashev to a one year, 750000 contract. So, uh, with 
So to add to Jonathan Taze, uh, they have Caleb Jones and Philip Kurashev. That's almost a full line for the Chicago Blackhawks currently. Hmm. Woof. Who else do they have? Uh, maybe a Zamboni driver. <laughs> that worked out well for uh, <laughs> Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> I think Chicago did have a uh, e-bug play at one point too, didn't they? Or am I wrong? No, it was you're, Dallas. You're right. uh, Scott Foster. Yes, that's yeah. right. Scott Foster. He was one of the first ones, I yeah. think. But he was a um, Blackhawks guy, accountant though. or something too, right? I forget what I forget. he. There's what been he like was. four or five of them now. Well, the thing with um, Carolina was he's uh, the Zamboni guy for Toronto. For Toronto, yeah. yeah, I think. But Scott was actually a the Chicago guy. guy. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, also, if you hear anything you want to chime in on on these signs, too, just go ahead because we're just going to rattle them off and yep. get through them. Uh, the Hurricanes signed Martin Natchos to a two-year, six-mil contract, three-mil AAV. And the Devils signed Jesper Bratt to a one-year 5.4 and Miles Wood to a one-year 3.2. Both of those avoid salary arbitration. I like both players. I like Miles Wood. Uh, Miles Wood has been a solid player, especially last year. I, I think Brat should be very happy with a five four. That's a lot of money for that guy. I mean, yeah. not not to disparage him, but I mean that's that's big money. Go for the money. It's locking it up. Go for the money. Again, Devils, man. Devils are another team. Another team that what? Sit outside the playoffs and watch exactly. everyone else in their fucking conference exactly. get a hundred points. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, moving on, we got the Sharks. They sign Mario Ferraro to a four-year, thirteen million dollar contract. Was a three point two five million dollar AAV. Um, want to move on, or just want to? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. They have the National Predators. They sign Yakov Trenin to a two-year, three point four million dollar contract, one point seven mil AAV, and it avoids a herring. Uh, Yakov Trenin uh, slowly coming up the Predators. You like, especially last year, you've heard his name a few times fourth line third line maybe but just slowly moving up making his way you know yeah i mean uh i i've seen his name come up a little bit i wanted to jump back to mario ferraro though i was doing some research on him here umass amherst guy i mean played three years in the nhl three full seasons he's a defenseman it's just kind of crazy that that much money for this guy he must be a good stay-at-home shutdown d um 11 17 14 points over the last three seasons Plus minus stands out to me on a team like oh, San yeah, Jose. That's bad. You know, minus fifteen, minus six, minus five. I think that's pretty good for a team like San Jose, though, where how bad they had been. Like he's not on the ice when they're getting scored on. Yeah. You know, to be close to flat on a season on a team that's, you know, bottom three in the division. Yeah, but they technically have, you know, two premier defensemen. Exactly. Yeah. And you're still that's getting true that too. type of minuses out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's true too. But they're offensive defensemen, so you gotta take it with a grain of salt, definitely. Yeah. But... yeah. Exactly. Um and then I couldn't move on. Yeah. So we have uh, two players that actually want to sign with the Golden Knights. Uh, it's Keegan Colasar to a three-year, $4.2 million contract, which is a $1.4 million AAV who uh, avoids a herring. And then they also signed Nicholas Roy to a big or long five-year, $15 million contract, which is a three mil AAV. Uh, Nicholas Roy, I guess, getting the money where the money's there because, again, like I said, not a lot of players want to sign with the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, yeah, he's a good production guy, though. I, I do like why he plays pretty well out there. He gets a, a few good chances, good opportunities. And I think next season, uh, it's going to be weird, man. It's going to be Jack Eichel bringing the Buffalo Sabres over to the Vegas Golden Knights from what it looks like. Yep. Um, the Win- Winnipeg Jets signed Mason Appleton to a three-year 6.5 mil contract, 2.17 mil AAV. Appleton's become the face of uh, the Jets. I yeah. feel like uh, when I see a Winnipeg Jets jersey, I think Appleton. Yeah, now that line A's gone and uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois came in. Yep. Uh, and then the Coyotes signed Lawson Kraus to a five-year 21.5 mil contract. This one's big, 4.3 mil AAV. It's going to look sick in that small-ass rink they have. Guy that I know absolutely <laughs> nothing about here, Lawson Kraus. That's Lawson interesting. Lawson Kraus. Want to look that up while I do some Bruins mm-hmm. news, especially for the big Bruins fan here? Uh, big. Well, we already, we knew it was coming. The Bruins signed Patrice Bergeron to a one-year $2.5 million contract. Uh, I don't have it on here, but it did say he, he was willing to take a pay cut because he thinks it's a whole team thing if they could sign good players. But doesn't he have, like, a bunch of incentive base in there, getting them up to, like, almost five mil? I saw that he could saw get up to something three. something like that. Yep. Yeah, up to three, yeah. Okay. I saw, I, I saw like, a bunch of performance Oh, you know what? Things. It may have been three mil in incentives to get I him up to 5.5. I think it was. From like the 2.5. With mm-hmm. incentives, yeah. That's nuts. So one more year for Bergie. I think this is going to be his last year. Hondo P. Well, you, you never know. Never know? You never know. Okay. If the family loves Boston, they want to stay there, you know, like that's you see with these guys. I'm do. just thinking before retirement. I'm not saying like. No, I know, else. but still, even playing, because like look at Tom Brady, you know what I mean? I, I mean, just... yeah. my thing with retirement and, and players and as a, like just 
you know, mentally, like if my game hasn't slipped to the point where I'm not able to make a roster, then I want to keep playing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Bergeron is by far not falling off. He's still in the running for the Selkie for X amount of years. So right. I would just say keep going until, you know, it stops going, kind of like Chara. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I see That's how I look at that at least. Uh, the Bruins also signed Pavel Zaka to a one-year $3.5 million contract who avoids herring. And then for all the Bruins fans, guess who's coming back? David Krejci to a one-year $1 million contract along with an additional two mil in performance-based bonuses. Um, so uh, the Bruins get their Krejci back. How do you feel about I, that? I love that. Yeah. I, for that that price tag. And then, like, just mm-hmm. remember, like, when we still had him, when him and Hall, when they, they like, immediately clicked, clicked and they were playing great together. I was so bummed when he went away. Mm-hmm. And uh, the other weird thing with that is, so, like, they had, like, that whole, like, um, coaching thing. You know, they get rid of Cassidy. But then all of a sudden, because, like, I feel like, you know, Bergeron was up in the air. Mm-hmm. Um, like, the, like pre-firing Cassidy, yeah. Bergeron's up in the air. Krejci's, like, MIA. And then... um. What was the other guy that like wanted out, but then like after- the Frost oh, did initially? Frost. Yeah, Frost. Ev- originally wanted out, but then like after Cassidy left, it's like, all right, Bergeron, here's your contract. Krejci's mm-hmm. coming mm-hmm. back. DeBrusque wants to be here, mm-hmm. and it's like, I-, I just wonder what's going what's on. What's going on? Yeah, it's always like the more you do this, the more you realize like this like inside shit. You have oh, yeah. no mm-hmm. idea. I also think I'm going to circle back too to the the Zaka signing. A lot of people are uh, not really a huge fan of that, but we traded away an older guy, in my opinion, for a Pavel Zaka. Yeah, that's big money for him, 3.5. He hasn't performed to earn it. But when I look at the other contracts on, around the league, I'm starting to realize that like these aren't contracts in dollar numbers based on like resume. It's based on like potential, and I think that's why he got this kind of money for Pavel Zaka. And I think he'll slot into the lineup nicely, mm-hmm. a good replacement for Eric Halla. Yeah. Uh, but if you guys want, we can jump back to Lawson Krause, too. Um, you know, six years in the show, all with Arizona, playing full seasons out there. Just kind of like a, you know. The guy you the, want. You know, the the four through nine player, you know. Yeah. I don't know. That's that's all I really see out of it. But we'll see. We'll see what next season looks we'll like for Arizona. Arizona Coyotes do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to look like you playing in Mongolia out there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right? I, I don't know. Mongolia might be a little nicer. <laughs> you see now, the light show. Now, question is, the ASU college game is going to be more sold out than the oh, yeah. oh, Arizona yeah. Coyotes? I think it's going to be like 50-50 away fans, though, don't you? Pro- probably. It's a short drive from Vegas is what I was saying a couple episodes ago. Oh, it is? And so yeah. uh, where is it um, in correlation to, like, Phoenix? I don't know that. I will find that out right now, though. Yeah, because, like, that's the thing. Like, that's their major draw. Like, once you, you, you took them out of Phoenix, I don't It's know. in Tempe, which is where they wanted their arena originally. Originally, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I should put, you should put that in the picks, too. Who, be like, at the end of the season, what what team sold out that arena more, ASU or the Arizona Coyotes? Oh, yeah, that, that'd be a great stat. Wait, wait. The season. What would they sell out more? Like, are Who? you saying last season versus this season? Or? No, after after next season, because of the new arena or the mm-hmm. ASU arena, who sold out more, who sold more tickets, the ASU college team or Arizona Coyotes? Oh, I got you. The actual college hockey team? Yeah, yeah it's going to be the Coyotes for sure. I don't think ASU is selling out their hockey games every every night. Well, they they're a good they're team. A good they team. are, but you think they're selling out? Oh yeah, they're a good team. They're a good team. I'm gonna look it up. I want to find College out. Kids I don't is think a good they excuse are. to go and party and watch these oh, guys. Fuck yeah, yeah, but a sold out arena, like five thousand. They had kids? to build it too because they they elevated their um yeah like they're like what D one now and yeah, yeah they did jump up that too. Vegas Vegas just in general is only like a four hour drive from ASU, mm-hmm. huh. so you can only imagine how many guys in Vegas just like yeah let's go. Well, that's the thing, too, is, like, a lot of these rinks are, like, so, um, you know, the two Floridas are, like, you know, three hours apart. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, New York City, just yeah. disgusting. It's just a little train ride over. <laughs> um, just right there. Well, yeah, and then they move. So you got the Islanders, you got um, Rangers, and then they, they moved the Devils right there in Newark. Uh, is it Newark? Newark, New Jersey, yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that, that place is, it looks like a third world country, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. It's Armpit bad. of America. This guy gets it. Yeah. yeah it's... <laughs> well, so we get this. Chris so... almost got us canceled like four, four episodes in after one of his comments about New Jersey. Thank God no one in New Jersey likes <laughs> hockey. <laughs> it, it was, it's, well, it's just the area, you know, it's, it's obviously going to be on the ups. Um, when I went there, it's, well, I like to watch the Bruins away games because, you know, we're the Marshall in Jersey. I get harassed <laughs> severely. Um, the, the new arena they have is beautiful. So they have, like, I, I noticed on these um, arenas, they have this new open concept. 
Mm-hmm. So they put concessions and bathrooms on the outside of the building. So when you walk around, it's just open. You literally could just look in, and there's the ice as you're walking oh, around. Oh, wow, interesting. You get your beers, you know, hot dogs, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but they have, like, curtains. They'll shut it, like, in between plays. You don't, like, get distracted. I was just telling Chris, my brother came. He lives in Florida. He came up during Christmas time, and uh, he got Bruins tickets. So I met. I haven't been to the garden in years, like, mm-hmm. before they, re, re, like, redid it all. And I remember getting in those seats. I'm like, "What the hell did the garden do?" Oh, they they it's awful. They crunched in a ton awful. of seats. Ton of seats. They they re fixed it though. They went back it. and ripped them all up and redid oh, it again. Did. Yeah, because everybody good. hated it. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Well, my... I still hated it because that was recent. It was after you went. Oh, really? No, wait, no, it was before you went. We talked about it on air. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. We went. You it went after they terrible. changed them. People hated it. But they redid it, and then you went. And then I went out. Then I was telling you that I went to go to um, cashierless, yeah, thing. And what I get like a Mike's Heart or something like that, and it was like fourteen dollars. I'm like, what the fuck? You spend so much money there. It's insane. So uh, I couldn't find any info on the on the ticket sales, but I did find that back in 2018-19, the ASU Sun Devils did go play at Gila River Arena at the Coyotes like home arena back then, Mm. like for a few games, a couple. Much made like the bean pot though, like Northeastern does, like uh, the garden. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I got three more signs. Want me to just rattle them off? Yeah, sure. So the Blackhawks, back to the Blackhawks, uh, they hired Derek Plant as an assistant coach. Uh, Plant, who's 51 years old, rejoins the Blackhawks after after spending five years with the club as a player development coach from 2015 to 2020. Last season, Plant helped coach the University of Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs to a 22-16-4 record in his second season as an assistant coach. Uh, good move from Blackhawks. Something. Yeah. It's I, something. I think he's a good name. Minnesota Duluth's a very good hockey team, too. Yeah. Um, Three M's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anything in Minnesota. Yeah, right. Right. Uh, moving on, we have the Kraken. They hired David Lowry as an assistant coach. Lowry spent most of the season as an interim head coach of the Jets following the resignation of Paul Maurice. Lowry took over on December 17th and went 26-22-6 and while head coach. Uh, David Lowry, I like the Kraken's picking up. I like I like Dave Lowry. I think it's kind of interesting that a guy who can, you know, shows his own merit as an interim head coach for the Jets for another guy ends up with all the coaching moves, like head coach moves around the league, ends up as an assistant again afterwards. You'd think that he would take that and be like, hey, I did it, you know? Yeah. Like, right. let me get a head coaching job. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Uh, good luck to the Kraken next season. I really hope that they turn it around because I like that team. I like their logo. Uh, yeah. Hopefully they do something. They draft them. I, didn't, I didn't like their picks. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't no. think anyone did. <laughs> would they have, like, like four or five, like, premier goalies on the on the chopping block? Something like that. I would. Yeah. I, honestly, if I was running, I'd pick them all. <laughs> like, oh, you want to put Carey Price out there? Sure. Sure. Because Montreal's yeah. sitting imagine, on all these draft picks. Imagine cornering the market on all the best goalies. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone they didn't protect just have a roster of 42 goalies. We got They're six mine now. Goalies. We can't score, but you guys won't score either. Hey, <laughs> you know how to hold a forward stick? Get out there. But you control the market. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, all these, set the price these teams now. would be scrambling to get these guys back. And yeah. Don't, don't put them out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would have just done it. Yeah, and then you can, like, you know, hold them hostage, basically. You ransom yeah. them. Yeah. Because Montreal was sitting on, like, uh, I think, like, six draft picks. And mm-hmm. it's like, yeah. Take Harry Price. Take Harry the Price. fans are going to freak out. Mm-hmm. You know, all right, give us some of those sweet draft picks oh, you got. Dude, the on. fans have freaked out so much harder, too. Like, you just blew oh, yeah. our draft picks <laughs> because we didn't protect Harry Price. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a lose lose for Montreal. Oh. Yeah, the organization they built around Carey Price. Oh, yeah. So. He's a legend that's there. That's basically like warfare on another country. Like, Seattle just like attacked Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Have... That would be uh, World would War like Three. Just yeah. two countries, though. <clears throat> and then the last bit. Is the Bruins? They promoted Jamie Langenbrunner to assistant GM. Uh, Langenbrunner joined the Bruins organization in 2015 as a player development coordinator. In 2020, he was pro- promoted to director of player development and player personnel advisor. Langenbrunner is a two time Stanley Cup champion, winning with the Dallas Stars in 1999 and the New Jersey Devils in 2003. He also represented USA Hockey twice in the Olympics, 1998 and in 2010, serving as the team's captain when USA Hockey won silver in the 2010s Winter, uh, sorry, Winter Games in Vancouver. Bruins making some moves here. Oh, well, actually, out of all the Bruins news, I I appreciate this one. It's it's some guy with some you know backstory. He's he knows what it takes. Won the cup. Was with Team USA. 
You know, I, I do right. like Lang and Bruner. He's probably one of my favorite last names to say up there with Cal Clutterbuck. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it de- really depends on what kind of a role he's going to play as assistant GM, um, how much he's going to have to say, and you know, let's hope he can actually read read a draft list and some scouting reports. Right. Fuck so. sakes. <laughs> You, you know what's the weirdest thing? Like, so you, you keep talking about, like, all these coaches and, you know, like, you, you know what I really want to see and then I'm dying for it is, like, you know, Billy Bean with the, the money ball. Like, do you think there's actually, like, you could implement something to that degree in mm-hmm. hockey? Like, do you think there's enough data yet that – yeah, I think hmm. the course he's getting there. I don't know what's going to be the thing that sets it over the edge that changes things, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, But I feel like where the sport is, there's got to be something that they're not looking at that could be the thing that, yeah, that is that, the piece. Yeah, that, that missing – because that's the thing. Like, these scouts, they go out there, they, they see these guys in college, and, like, you know, they're playing with cages. I remember talking to a guy that was scouting, and he's like, yeah, like, you see him come up and he hits him in the cage. And it's like, you think, like, if he's going to play for me in the NHL, he's a great guy, but – you know, he's got these tendencies to, you know, and they don't call it because it's a cage. You know, yeah. nothing happens. He's like, but he's going to get you. He's going to cost you a penalty. Yeah. And, like, and, you know what I mean? Then you don't draft him. And, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Wow. I didn't think of that. Because that's that was the, the big thing with Moneyball was you take this player and you just stats only. You don't care how he throws. You don't care how he plays. Mm. Like, if he makes the, the stats where you want him what you need. And at the end yeah. of the day, I think it was on base percentage that was the one that they were looking at, right? Like, no matter, I don't give a shit about anything else. He gets on base like this amount of times. Yeah. And if you have a team full of guys that have that, guess what? They're gonna each get on base. Yeah. Remember, like one of their of runs. like one of their premier pitches is like he pitches weird. They're like he pitches weird. And yeah. It's like I don't care. He, you know, gets strikes. Yeah, so. yeah. That's funny. Because that's the thing with that's hockey. Awesome. Like these, you know what I mean? Like he comes up, he just you know hits him in the cage, and he's like, oh, I'm done with him. I think. I mean, I think the comparison kind of dies where. Hockey's such a team sport at the end of the day. There's yeah. so many different factors that are involved. So, like, you can get a team of all guys that do this thing, but now the team is all the same, and they find the weakness of that one guy, and there's yeah. your it's opportunity. It's so fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's fast-paced, it's team. But yeah. then, like, the other thing, too, is, like, you know, when you go through these stats and these guys in certain teams, it's like, you know, like, oh, he's minus this, but he's playing for that team. So, you yeah. all, like, like, even when you look at the stats, you have to take What certain, line is he on? Certain yeah, things you have to take a like, grain of salt. And, yeah. you know, even, like, Who's he teams. playing against, too? You know, like, they're matching their third line against the second line or et cetera, yeah. you know? Yeah. Who's in net? How he's playing? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah, there's just so much to, t- like, yeah. oh, okay, well, yeah. Because that's the thing, like, you you know, d- the three great goalies, right? Rua, Hashik, and Brodeur. Mm-hmm. Do you think... Brodeur and Hashik's teams in front of him can compare to, you know, the Avalanche there, or even Montreal that spends money and Mm -hmm. they build teams. Yeah, interesting. But then, you know, the three of them are still legendary goalies, and it's like, man, like, how do you you go with that? Like, he had a team in front of him. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Like, Brodeur Raw, like, they both have these stats that just, like, you can't – so a lot of the goals can't reach. Yeah. And it's it's because the the guys in front of them. Yeah. And it, it's so funny to compare, like, back then, too, to now. There's certain things that Gretzky did that will never be done again, but oh, there's yeah. certain stats that will never be touched again because of how much scoring has increased in the NHL, too. Mm-hmm. It's always been that, like, influx of, like, scoring's up. They change the goaltending things, and they learn how to find the shooters, and then it goes down. Mm-hmm. They change the gear. It goes back up. Like, they're always fucking with the league, the numbers, everything to, you know, keep it interesting. But What was the thing I sent you? It was, like, a five-year difference between, like, highest goals – and I think in 2015, no, 2017 versus 22 versus 2022, it's like the highest goal. It was Sidney Crosby had 40 goals was like the most goals mm-hmm. scored, and like this year it was even like the top five or ten, the lowest guy had more than 40. Yeah, which it was is insane. Nuts. Like yeah. the most was like over 60, and you're like, holy shit! Mm-hmm. Like in a five year span, like it just blew blew well, up you know well, they're, they're breaking down the, the videos on these goalies like mm-hmm. that's why you see these like young goalies come out and they're hot yeah because they just don't have the video mm-hmm. they're not you know the video they do have is like they're playing against guys that aren't mm-hmm. nhl caliber and they, yeah. it's so hard to read these goalies and then you just that see makes them, sense and then the next year. season after they suck because they everyone's learned up. them because they've mm-hmm. played them wow yeah that's interesting to think about well all these goalies too are just trained a certain way mm. you're supposed to have like a bunch of tools in the shed but a lot of them just like this is just what works for me. This is how I do it, and they don't. They're not really trained to switch shit up. They're just like if you let in a goal, just keep doing it, you know. And it just takes like a few good players to yeah. realize like, well, he's just, low glove side is where he fucks up. So I'm just gonna go there all the time, you know. 
Yeah, and situationally too, though, like you know, you look at these goalies and their matchups, like how their defense, like um, was it Tortorella? He's like just eat the puck. You know yeah. what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. you know, your goalie with a Tortorella team, yep. these defensemen they're just killing themselves in front of you. Yeah, um, and then your goalie with the Flyers, and it's like Jesus Christ, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. That's why I said uh, the whole Darcy Kemper move with the uh, Washington Capitals. So like I was telling, I was just telling him that Colorado Avalanche was such a fucking powerhouse that you didn't need a solid goaltender. Yeah, no. And I think Washington Capitals saw Darcy Kemper and were like, "You're gonna do something for us." Mm-hmm. Where I think we're gonna I, I actually think, see Darcy Kemper as what he is. But I think also Kemper, some reason, something about him like mirrors Braden Holpe to me. Like I see shades of him in Darcy Kemper. Oh really? And that's why I think him going there makes a lot of sense. Well, I wonder too. if they have the same goalie coaches that yeah. too. You know, yeah, like yeah. Kind of pushing him that way. Interesting. Um, it's it's tough. It's yeah. tough to see what these guys are doing in the background because, like, who? Because that's the thing. Like, you see these major, like, the head coaches, but then, like, it's it's the head coaches can only do so much. It's mm-hmm. it's you know his his support team that really can. Yeah, exactly. Influence, that too. you know, because like you know he's got all these guys to deal with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's just again just so much mm-hmm. in the back. You know. Yeah, that's why like, like every interview you have to take everything they say with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like they're 100%. not telling you everything, and then there's just so much more. And then same with like these GM moves, like the whole um, like the Cassie thing. Like I said, like. At first, I'm like, oh, man, like, he was doing pretty good. Like, the team was doing good. But then, like, after he left and then I see all these signings and I'm like, all right, maybe there was something going on mm-hmm. that, you know, they don't want to say because they want him to, you know, get a good job and, you know, they want yeah. the best for him. But You saw how quick he got signed, too. <laughs> yeah. Right? The next day. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm going to move on uh, with the next because I thought it would be a good thing to add, too, with uh, everything you do in uh, Ecuador and uh, Egypt. Uh Especially for women, too. Women in hockey. Women in hockey is our thing that we've been talking about. And here in Japan, uh, Chiho Osawa retired after 30 years. A second-generation ice hockey player, her father, oh, God, Hirotoshi Osawa, represented Japan at the Group B tournaments of the Ice Hockey World Championship in 89, 90, and 91. Osawa has represented Japan at eight double IHF Women's World Championships. She made her World Championship debut in 2009 double IHF uh, Women's World Championship at age 17. Named an alternate captain for the 2012 Double IHF Women's World, and Osawa has served as team captain for every World Championship since 2013 at Division I Group A tournaments in 2013 and 2017 and the top division tournaments in 2015, 16, 19, and 21. So not only uh, is the sport just growing just generally in Japan, but the fact that we have a women hockey player in Japan, 30 who's been playing for 30 years too that's insane to see her be at the top division in you know in her country for 30 years straight yeah like, that's a that's a long career dude mm-hmm. especially in net like the breakdown and everything like that down, like yeah. your hips your knees everything everything and to add that too, her father was part of the hockey the whole hockey thing too so yeah. just generation thing so it's great to see uh this just game growing yeah it's crazy like w- when i was in japan like you wouldn't have think you wouldn't have thought hockey was even like a thought, so it's crazy to see like until you see like this twelve year old Japanese kid that can like <laughs> deke you out of your your jock strap mm-hmm. <laughs> and go top cheese every time. <laughs> uh, uh, do you want to do it? Yeah, if it's cool with you, okay. I'll cover the New York Rangers. They have actually named Jacob Truba as their next captain. Uh, I think our Temi Panarin seems to disagree. He thinks he's the better choice. A little yep. shout out to him. Mm-hmm. Red man. <laughs> <laughs> the Rangers haven't had a captain since Ryan McDonough back in 2018, which I thought was really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of interesting that they were like one of the few teams without a captain. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think Jacob Truba is a great fit. I think I would have liked to see like a Chris Kreider or Mika Zibanejad, yeah. but then I thought about that and I said, you put the spotlight on those guys, that's that kind of added pressure yeah. that you don't need. They and don't like, need it. What Jacob Truba brings to the ice, his teammates really appreciate, I think, and I mean, we have no idea what the locker room looks like, so it's it's probably more about that than anything else at yep, the end of the day. 100%. But there are seven other NHL teams that currently don't have a captain. Wow. The Ducks, after Ryan Getz have retired. The Coyotes, since Oliver Ekman Larson last. The Sabres, since Jack Eichel left. The Flames, since Mark Giordano was drafted to the Kraken. Uh, the Canadians, since Shea Weber left. And the Flyers, since Claude Giroux. And lastly, the Seattle Kraken, again, since Mark Giordano is gone. So Mark Giordano is there as captain, left, and Crack is like, mm, okay, we don't have a, a captain. They'll probably have one before the beginning of the season, I would think. That's the one team that I think they're going to have to 
set one before we get started here. I didn't realize how common it was for teams not to have captains. Mm. Yeah, that's so weird. And like, so with that, if you don't have a captain, then you, do you have, just have an additional, you know, alternate captain or the A? The A, yeah, uh, yeah, the, I think the, they do. The assistant yeah. captains take over. Yeah, you know? and, and I don't know if they get an additional one or if there's just like the three and one of them that goes up and deals with the ref. No, yeah. there's no, there's no additional A. I looked that up. Oh, okay, so you have the just assistant captains that just take over. So, nice. so because like, remember what was the Bruins that they had like these two guys they would like alternate who was wearing the A. Oh really? Yeah, that was like during their Stanley Cup run there. I remember in like, eleven. Uh, I think it was or around back in that. the day. It was around eleven oh, wow. that they had like two guys and they just like you know traded off who's wearing the A. That's funny. Yeah, it was weird. That is weird, huh? That's interesting. I, uh, I remember hearing about hmm. that back then. Yeah, because that was everybody. I wish I knew about. more about that. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to fucking like, break that down yeah, a little we're bit. Look that up. <laughs> I'll write that down because yeah. I want to yeah, look exactly. that up after this. Um, but we did have one more little. Um, New York Rangers touch on here. Uh, Keandre Miller at the Beauty League met a non-sports fan named Miles, and Miles actually has autism. One of his traits is that he doesn't like crowds or loud noises, so going to sporting events is just, like, not for him. Keandre took the time and chatted with him and took some photos with him, signed his shirt, and Miles was, like, amped, like, through the roof. Like, he's, mm. he's like, a Rangers fan now. That's you know? awesome. I was like, that's pretty cool. That's one way to grow the game. A guy that doesn't even want a thing to do with, like, big hockey. groups. Hockey. Anything <laughs> yeah. that would be NHL. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's cool as shit. So good move for, uh, from Keandre Miller. Um, so we there's two things that we got here uh, that's going to be a little callback from the beginning here. So Hurricanes forward Max Pacioretty is expected to miss six months with a torn Achilles and won't make his debut with the Carolina Hurricanes until February. And to add to uh, the Vegas Golden Knights situation, Chris has, uh, the Vegas, Vegas Golden Knights' Robin Leonard will miss all of next season after needing hip surgery, and no timeline on when he'll return mm. has been determined. Do I rip this up now or later? Just uh, probably, <laughs> I don't know. Do Put, it in Put it in the fire. Put in the fire. Yeah, it is It is nuts. Um, it seems like, what was the guy's name? Is it Logan Thompson is their best bet in net now? I believe that's right for Vegas. Uh, I don't know. The team just it, it just smells like Buffalo all over again. <laughs> it's I mean, worse. poor it's... Jack Eichel. <laughs> I think he's cursed, man. That's terrible. Like, well, well um, it was a, it was their first season, Vegas Golden Knights. How many goalies did they end up going through? Yeah, that's like, right. Didn't they get down to like their fourth or fifth goalie? Something like that. Yeah, yeah it was getting they were getting real deep, just deep. trying to like mm-hmm. play games. Get by. Flurry left. Robin Leonard was not up to par. Who, who do they have? Is Lauren Persuas right? And I thought he was uh, Winnipeg, Thompson. right? He was in Winnipeg, and then he went to uh, Vegas. Oh, you're saying who do they have now? Uh, oh, I'm trying to think back then. Like, mm. well, but there was so many have Leonard back then. That was like, I, I remember Subban was playing games. Oh, like, Malcolm Subban. Right. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Oh, Nobody. Oscar Dansk. Yeah, that's right. I remember. Holy shit. I think they, like, maybe five or six deep or something. It was, yeah. they were really picking, trying that. to get somebody. COVID, people COVID the changed minors. so much, I think. Remember, like, teams were just, like, they had their style, they had their... Like yeah, third string goalie is much more common now. I feel like like you have an NHL third common. string guy here. Because yeah. 2020, like say that like your goalie had like COVID or something like that, or just was it feel good? You had to bring up like your your backup, and your backup now has COVID, and now teams are scrambling for like these thirds mm-hmm. and fourths and everything. That's and, why they had the taxi squad and, rules. And that and that taxi squad, a lot of goalies just like solidified their spot, and now yeah. I think a lot of teams are just like. All right, well, you're the starter, but just know we have this guy, like, third that could probably take your spot right now, you know? <laughs> that makes it that much harder of a decision, too. Like, you see this one guy start shining and, like, looking so good as the third song. You're like, Jesus, Jesus, do we do something? Like, both of our guys are healthy, but they both kind of suck right now. I like, was saying that about Connor Ingham with the Nashville Predators. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, dude, you just solidified your spot. But... Well, that's kind of what, what happened with the Bruins when you had, you know, when Ras came back at Allmark and Swayman. You look mm-hmm. at that on paper and you're like, yeah, Jesus. Ugh. You got three good goalies sitting yeah. there. But obviously it didn't go that way. But yeah. uh, mm-hmm. you're still looking at it and like it's that's a tough, tough, tough call. Because yeah. you don't want to like – because, they, you know, they sat Swayman and put him down in Providence. It's like you don't want him to like lose right. faith in the organization. But it's – yeah. All right. We ready for the weekly segment, Matthew? I'm ready for call the weekly you by segment. government name. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the post-to-post picks. Uh, who is going to win the Rocket Richard Trophy this season? That is more goals, uh, most goals in the regular season. Ooh. Ooh. You can chime in too, Paul, if you think yeah, of a pick before we so. do. That's easy, Matthews. You think he's going to win it back-to-back? Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Why? Look at Ovechkin. He won it, like, you know, seven out of eight years. Of course, one of the years he had the second worst plus minus, but still. Wow. <laughs> You don't think McDavid's going to perform better than Matthews? I was going to say Connor McDavid. He's he he's, 
I could play in his line and score goals in the NHL. He sets people up, man. Okay, so that's the issue is Matthews is the goal scorer Matthews and McDavid is, does it all? Matthews is definitely selfish. Okay. McDavid, I could, you know, like I said, he could he set could do me up. both. He could play make, he can score. He's... Whereas Matthews, you just pass him the puck and just let him do his thing. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I like that. I'm still going to say McDavid. You going McDavid? Yeah. You ready for this one? This is going to knock your socks off, dude. Phil Kessel? Johnny Huberdeau. Oh! Wow. With his new squad. They were firing on all cylinders last year. I think he's going to slot in nicely with uh, whoever the fuck his line mates are going to be. Hey, how much How much did you bet on the uh, Calgary winning it all that, again? I passed that right over <laughs> to him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I should have told Matt. Bucks. I should have yes. told Matt to pick Huberdeau. I just didn't want to have the same answer as one of you two. And, like, there's really no great answer next, but... I don't know. I'd like to see Huberto really shine in his new squad, and I think I think Calgary has you know something something to say, something to prove this season. Just help me out. So so like going off of that. So you had so which one of us was your number two? So you wanted Huberto because you didn't want to be like us. So either about- one. Like I was between the two of them, and then you guys both picked them. So I was like, well, now I need a third answer. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just reaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I wouldn't have picked back to back. I would have probably went McDavid. I think. Vetchkin did it for years. Yeah, yeah. Years. That's nuts. <laughs> sure is. Sure is. Um, I I, I want to go back to something I actually just sent to you on Instagram today, and it was something you sent to me like last week. It was Joe Thornton getting in the face of they're talking to the ref, and here's Henrik Sedin next to him, and Joe Thornton just literally putting just like his glove like in his nose, and Henrik keeps swap trying to swat him away and. Joe's just fucking with them the entire time. And then we find out that the Sedin twins used to switch jerseys for fun, and it all started during their days of playing minor league hockey in Sweden. So to add to that, this is the NHL, and Joe's th- doing that, and the announcer's like, yeah, he's fucking around with Henrik Sedin, but do we know if that was Henrik <laughs> Sedin? Was that Daniel, <laughs> da- uh, yeah, Daniel is that, Sedin that he was Is that even with? legal? Like, can... I don't know. Imagine well, can you they get tell like, the difference? They get, like, banned. They're like, you're not in the Hockey Hall of Fame anymore because your stats are all wrong because that was your brother scoring for you. Yeah. Can you imagine how fucked up their <laughs> hey, stats bro, are now? it's my birthday. Can you, can you look me up? <laughs> they must know. Like, both of them are just like, just don't say anything. Be like, I yeah. helped you out with your stats this year. You're going to help me out with my stats this year. No year. shit, like, yeah. yeah. I had him in like, hey, like you're getting that. ahead of me. Let's swap jerseys. Yeah, I need a couple jerseys, more tucks. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but they then they're like. They must be in the locker room early, so they. Like when no one's around, they can just like quickly like swap jerseys. But you you could definitely tell those guys are fun because like remember the commercial like oh we yeah. got Swedish twins. twins yeah dude yeah the twins they're definitely fun I love yeah. that the guy puts on the boombox just getting ready yeah. <laughs> they don't have commercials like that anymore no nope, no nope, no shit. too fun too fun like the whole oh god what was the uh, the whole is the whole Sidney Crosby and Ovechkin thing yeah at the uh, hotel room for the, the All Star game. Uh, with Ovechkin is like he's ordering a bunch of food to mm. Sidney Crosby and Sidney Crosby over the door he goes like Ovechkin you know just I like, like I like the one that they're calling back on now with all the Russia Ukraine stuff going on it's the ESPN offices one where yeah. Ovechkin's a Russian, <laughs> Russian spy so like I knew it <laughs> <laughs> I I recently came across one where guys and kids in high school he drops his hockey bag and he opens up his locker and, and the guy's just, head Ovechkin's yeah, yeah. head just yeah, on yeah, it he oh. goes did you get the new CCM or he goes it's doing the uh, the championship will be us and just starts laughing yeah. hysterically yeah. I love that that was great. He's great in commercials. Even like the new one that he did with Bacchus on the couch. Like that's funny. <laughs> that shit's good. That's right. Um, wanna get into something crazy here too? A uh, an adult safe hockey league game in Scotia Barn in Burnaby, British Columbia, Canada. A player kicked his opponent in the face and which left his opponent injured. The incident is under investigation with the Burnaby RCMP, which is the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. I uh, don't like this move. This is a trash move. You know you have skates on, and you decide to kick someone. I'm all for it. No problem. You're going to fight with someone? Fucking kick him. Oh, someone's fucking dirty over there. Obviously, I'm not cool with this. What do you mean? <laughs> You're just going to lead off like, oh, not cool. Not cool, dude. Obviously, it's not cool. What the fuck does that? It's a men's league, too. At least take it off and try and stab somebody with yeah. it. Yeah. A- adult safe <laughs> hockey up. league. Square dude. up, man. <laughs> Definitely was not anything safe about that. That is kind of a weird Can you imagine something so crazy name. where, like, the police had to get involved? Yeah, I mean, I've seen it. Yeah, no yeah. shit, right? Oh, yeah, it happens. I yeah. mean, meet me in the parking lot, and then shit goes south. <laughs> well, talking about shit, remember the guy shitting the guy's glove at yeah. him? And it, oh, that one's big. God, that yeah. one's big. Oh my god, it's just it's just wild the stuff you see. That happened twice. I found out that actually re- that recently came up. <laughs> it was the same guy, it serial was, shitter, it ha- phantom it pooper. It happened at Saugus. <laughs> it happened in Saugus, and it happened in uh, Hingham. 
Jesus Christ. What the so hell? was it the same guy, like the glove poopa? No, I hope it not. That's very like, far away. I hope he's not driving to like, Saugus and hang him. Pull that like one me. out of their ass. Ha <laughs> 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 ba-ding. I'm going to just put my glove on. Oh! Jesus. Ugh. How do you, the, the fact that you, like, can get someone's glove away from them, too, is kind of nuts. Yep. Like, well, how, if you're in a scrum and then you just see it sitting there, you know. <laughs> see you later. Go have fun getting it. I hate you. <laughs> you know. Is it Paul? Was it you? Was, Was it, it you? you? Did no. you take a shit in the gloves? Yeah. No. We the glove I've, I've done some weird stuff getting in hockey fights, but I've never pooped in someone's uh, glove. The worst <laughs> is me is I, I purposely stepped on this hockey stick blade and broke oh, it. Oh, good. Yeah, the Marshawn special. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. The little. Yeah, well, it's, it's beer league, you know? Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hurt this guy sent him to the hospital, but it'll cost him two hundred bucks in the wallet. Yeah. Like, go get yeah. a new stick. So oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, let me know which division you guys are in so we can play in a different division. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> keep your gloves uh keep your gloves with up. you at all times. Yeah. We're like, oh my, my gloves here, I get to go. Uh wanna so we're gonna circle back to Joe Thornton here. Joe Thornton has reportedly agreed to be Spangler Cup's head of sports. Uh, Joe Majo is currently training with the Swiss League team HC Davos. Thornton also came out and said uh, that he is looking to stay in the NHL for another season if he can and will be accepting this position after his retirement. Interesting. So Joe Majo has already got, got some jobs lined already. up. He's, He's like Tom Brady. Ready to go. Mm. Love it. Ready love to transition it. out. He's another one. Him and uh, – for the San Jose Jacques back in the day, it was, it was him and Brent Burns. They had these awesome commercials with the both of them. Like, there was a wine yeah. one, and, oh, man, they nailed it. He's a great locker room guy, too, I hear. Mm -hmm. He just likes being with the boys. But, dude, I don't think he's going to get a cup. It's bad. I hate to I say it. I want it so bad, and it's not going to happen. I thought he was going to get it with it the hurts. Florida Panthers. It hurts a little bit. And then uh, they went to the strip club, and I was like, this is the end of it. <laughs> who's, that, who's that guy that keeps, like, Switching to teams, oh, thinking he's uh, going to be a Corey dream. Perry. Corey Perry. Corey Perry. Yeah. Patrick Rap Maroon was a, uh, a magnet for it, though. He got three yeah. straight, oh, St. Louis, Tampa, Tampa, and That's then right. was in the finals again for four, you know? Yeah. I, I guess the shooters beat the good goalie, you know? I guess so. Yeah, I wonder if Perry's going to get traded to the Avs before the season starts off. Ooh. I need a cut, man. <laughs> you guys are looking <laughs> real good. It's like, oh, great, now we're out of it now. Yeah. <laughs> Like, no, we will not sign you. Go away. I know. <laughs> uh, so we have uh, two more things to talk about here. We got the reverse retro jerseys making a comeback next season. The Lightning are bringing back the 1997 Storm Scene third jerseys. You know what I'm talking about? It's uh, the old school logo, and you have, like, the the lightning on, like, the arms. Remember that at all? Way back in the day. And then uh, Those are, like, early Marty St. Louis, right? Yeah, yep. And then uh, the Islanders are bringing back one of our favorite jerseys, the 1995 Fisherman jerseys. Yes. Swag. 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 Uh, the Sharks are bringing back the California Golden Seals jerseys, and there's mm. talk about white skates as well. I hate this. Hate this. I love that's, a, that. that's a no for me. You like them? White skates. White I think that just the font of the seals is everything. so atrocious. Dude, like, it's oh, the so seals, yeah. ugly. The seals looking. were a joke of the NHL to begin <laughs> with. Ugh, wasn't a fan of this. Um, Coming from a guy that hates the Whalers, though. Yeah. Uh, the Oilers are bringing back the 2001 third jersey design that was designed by Canadian and Spawn Comics creator Todd McFarlane. Uh, it was like the what the hell, what the hell is it? it was the oil like the drop. Steel. Yeah, 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 I like yeah. I like that it one. Looks like the Halo. Thing. Yeah, 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 100. Uh, percent What do we got? The Canucks are bringing back the 1962 uh, Johnny Canuck design, like Sick. that, like yeah. that. People love that one. I mean, it's okay. The yeah. little lumberjack guy. It's all right. Love it. It's all right. It's all right. And then uh, lastly, we have the Blackhawks. They're bringing back the 1937 jersey design. That was a really? great year for hockey. What does it even look like? It's the exact <laughs> I have no same. Idea. It's just like <laughs> yeah, don't... lesser quality than what they have now. Just like, you know, like a, a lower, shittier, lower a shittier. Yeah, it's yeah, pixelated. It, it's <laughs> comes dude, with asbestos hey, line. Pixel jerseys would look kind of sick. If everyone took their jersey, made it like 8 bit. Yeah. I've seen it before. I just. It didn't work. No. I just like thought of that when I said pixelate. I'm like, that might look kind of nice. Mm. I'm sure if they Apparently like not. the ones I saw was like a boat and it was like real chunky blocks. I'm sure mm. if you did, you know, a little bit more tighter, yeah, yeah. sweet, couple but... extra pixels. Mm. Yeah, I need need a few more pixels. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're gonna end this on a somber note. Unfortunately, uh, this week, you ready for this? Couple tough ones here, couple boys. tough ones. Uh, so we're gonna start off with the San Jose Sharks athletic trainer Tom Woodcock passed away earlier this week. 
Tom worked as an athletic trainer in the NHL for 36 years, starting with the St. Louis Blues, Hartford Whalers, and then the San Jose Sharks in 1991 to 2004. He was actually inducted into the Hockey Fall of Fame in 2003. That's, That's awesome cool. that he got to see that before he passed, too. Yep. And uh, one thing that happened the other day that uh, sucks from for everyone in the hockey world is uh, Edmonton Oilers legend and fan favorite Ben Stelter passed away at six years of age this week. And uh, that one stung. That, that one hurts. That, that one hurt. hurts. I wanted to see uh, the Oilers get one for him. Yeah. You know, I know. Yeah, have him see them get a cup. Yeah. yeah. Even if it wasn't this season, if they got one next. But that, that's terrible to see. That sucked. They were so oh. close last year. I'm like, oh, maybe, you know, next year we get to see Ben raise the cup. Mm-hmm. And no. Nope. Oh. Just that's going to hurt. Like, uh, I think Layla from uh, St. Louis reached out to him, too. I think they were in touch because she was the, the sick child that oh, yeah. was with the St. Louis Blues the year they won the cup. So I think that's going to hurt her, too, to hear. Ben's been unbelievable throughout the entire hockey He's been community. viral, dude. And viral. Yeah, he's awesome. And not even just hockey community whatsoever. It's it's other kids and adults, too, that are going through what he's been through. And uh, it, it, it was just awesome to see the Oilers organization one and just the hockey community just bring him in as family, you know? Mm. They, they Oilers brought him in. They did everything they could with him just to Post make him game feel, Post-game interviews, MVP and, helmet. Everything and man. his just awful, awful situation. I never saw Ben like just sad. Mm. You know, he was always smiling, always like loving what he was doing. La Bamba baby playing like you know, just just great, great kid and such a such such an unfortunate you know, yeah. just so we needed something to um, cheers or do our uh, end of episode nips to. We're definitely gonna do this to Ben. Yeah, this mm-hmm. one's for you, Ben. Yep. Um. So, before we do the nips, um, got anything else? Anything you want to chime in with? Anything Are you, you good? Chime in with? Wanna anything prom- we missed? Want to promote anything? In you your wanna... career? No, not really. I talked about all this stuff. You, you got to go fund me? OnlyFans? Go anything like that? Yeah, <laughs> That's the rumors. Everyone's like, you got to go fund me to do these trips. I'm like, no, dude. <laughs> 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 that's hilarious. So it's the OnlyFans that's paying the bills. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. I got right, you. Right. I know goalies had OnlyFans. I'll have to check that out. It's called you know? Goalie Fans. Goalie, goalie fans. fans. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a funny website to start up. Not even like, I don't know, nudity porn, because OnlyFans is allegedly not just for that. Yeah. Call it Goalie Fans. It's just like pictures of you and your gear, like playing, just, making saves. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to pay to access Working them. Working in the glove. Look, you got to work it in. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! Paint me like one of your French girls. It's just you and all your gear, just like laid out. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot open this make? nip for the fucking life of me. It's dude. these goddamn caps. Caps. You got it, please. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dad, I need an adult. Oh, what a legend! Oh, Thank you. You need, you need that goalie grip, bud. Thanks. Need yours? What? Oh, you already got yours. Oh okay. yeah. Yep. He got mine for me too. What a beauty. That's why we got you on the show. Yeah, that's why I'm Yeah, captain. thank you so much Crack for coming nips. on, too. Yeah, yeah, appreciate yeah, no it, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Glad you didn't get any phone calls while you were on call tonight. Yeah, that's Episode worked out yeah. good. Oh, yeah. Hopefully you don't get any while you're trying to sleep. <laughs> that's money, you know. <laughs> for Mongolia. <laughs> Do you really get overnight calls? Oh, yeah. I'll get called out 3 in the morning, you know, 6 in the morning. <laughs> There's a raccoon running around in my pipes up there. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they're legit, but, you know, most cases it's just... Just a peace of mind oh, type shit. of deal, yeah. Nice. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, it's not a real big deal. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> Three in the morning. What are you gonna do? You know. Yeah. As my uncle, my uncle has his own HVAC company, mm-hmm. and I used to help him out years ago. And uh, yeah, he'd waited out like Fenway Park. There's a restaurant right across the street, and that was like one of his big things at the time. The AC units or whatever would always fuck mm. up. You must be uh, actually sorry to interrupt. Uh-huh. Doing a ton of work with this heat wave, right? No, not really. Really? No. So, so the way my job goes is just completely random. Okay. I could, you know, in the heat, like, I, I was on call, like, you know, during the heat wave, like, a month or so ago, and I kept getting no hot waters, not even oh, AC calls. what? It's interesting. That's the thing. Like, that it, is random. You can't predict. Like, you have 4,000, 3,000 customers. I can't predict what's going to break and who's willing to call me out because, you know, most of these calls are, you know, nonsense calls like yeah. they can wait it's not mm-hmm. a big deal no, like, yeah you know like you don't need your ac at 10 o'clock at night but i could see you know next day or wait it out yeah yeah yep. yeah it's that's, that's the one thing i hated during the summertime like there's an ac unit in the in the attic mm-hmm. and it's like 80 degrees 85 degrees outside and like 105 degrees in the attic oh, oh that's it it's gotta be hotter than that dying 
just it's, dying. It's bad. You you know what's weird? Ecuador, um, at least in Quito, the the capital there where we were, no heat or AC. You don't need it. The weather's just yeah pristine. All Bra- Brazil was like that too. And my buddy's down there, and he was telling me he's got family down there. They had a wicked like cold winter and people like dying from hypothermia because there's no heat Whoa. no AC. Yeah. the building isn't made to retain They're heat not, or yeah. retain yeah. cool coolness so that's crazy same thing with london getting the heat wave their oh, buildings yeah, are made right, to yeah. retain the heat because it's always so cold there yeah now when it's 100 degrees they're like fuck it's hot yeah. <laughs> well you look down south they get like a dusting in those like yeah <laughs> get, uh, <laughs> car accidents there's no like, plow. the whole city oh, just like, shuts no down. plows yeah, no nothing. sand trucks like <laughs> nothing dude what, yeah. what it was dallas or nashville what was it tennessee mm-hmm. they got a georgia uh, got hit with a snowstorm georgia storm. got hit one and the whole what two three inches and the whole mm. thing just shut down imagine a People snow day for an inch of snow i know oh. but they're not used to it you go mm. down there i'm sure you go down there not a, i mean that's a lie probably a lot of trucks down there but i feel like a lot of people up here like they choose their cars wisely be like will this make it through the winter you know yeah my brother and i were talking about cars today and uh I was like, I see all these people getting these, like, kitted out cars, and they, like, lower them as low to the ground as they can. That's the worst thing in the world around here. There's right so in. many fucking right. potholes. Like, you hit one, and you're like, yeah. stuck to the ground. Well, like, if you get the air oh. suspension, and you can just, you know, Move raise it, it when you need yeah. it. Oh, no shit. I don't yeah. know shit about cars. So I see those, and I'm like, how no. do you drive around here? I, I want a car that had the air suspension. It, it had a pretty good, you know, lowering and elevation. No shit. Yeah. Some dude had a Ferrari last week. I think it was last week or this week. And uh remember looking at it, kind of, like, appreciated it for a second. I'm like... That was the dumbest decision you could have made up here. No. Have you ever seen the video of the, uh, it was a Lamborghini, but going through the snow with the, like the all-wheel drive system? No. Oh. The guy's like flooring Lord. it. And he's like, the computer system in this, like it knows when this tire, like to shut it off when you're just cranking through the snow. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. It's wow. a Lamborghini. It better. It better, it better do, do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. So let's finish this off. Our, this is a long episode, huh? Yeah. Cheers, Cheers boys. boys. Cheers. Let's go. Oh, I love my Gilly Cuddies. Well, don't need to brush my teeth now. I was just about to <laughs> say the exact same thing. <laughs> Be like, ooh. All right. How do we got to do this? Call it out normally? Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for listening. If there's anything you want to see us cover next episode, let us know. Our links are in the description, and we'll see you all next week. Bye, guys. Peace. Take it easy.